Hello there. Welcome to the Cars, Bars, and Guitars podcast episode number 81. I'm AJ. And I'm Steve. Steve, who are we brought to you today by? Rest in peace to the greasy diner in the skies of an Applebee's. Yes, Jimmy's, who uh, our current guest is not a huge, was not a huge fan of. I could take it or leave it. And I had it all of once, and uh, you know, Waffle House did the same thing better and cheaper. Yep. Now I'm not sure if he uh, just really likes us, or if he's really bored, or if it's just a little bit of both. But Mr. Brian Layton's back for a quadrupeat. Hooray! <laughs> uh, Four Pete. I think three Pete was. Uh, Copyright, but four Pete was not. Four Pete was not. Well, we should have had a scotch in your honor. A peated scotch. Noted. <laughs> we'll do that next time for the five Pete. For sure. The five Pete. Yes. Uh, return of the... Uh, Penta Pete. It's evil. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I'll we'll turn the table. We'll have to get two more guests. <laughs> turn the table a different way. Uh, we, are, we have a lot on the... <laughs> we have a lot on the drinking um, on the table today. So Where the hell are we doing that? Uh, we have a... That. <laughs> uh, so we have the Kirkland Citra Hop Session IPA Craft Brewed Ale, available at your local Costco if you're in the Charlotte metropolitan area. <laughs> the best thing going for $20 for a 24-pack. It was discussed on, or at Monday. It was discussed yes. Monday when we went, we all went to Saucer, uh, which like, hey, let's go we need to convince do- you to come more often. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Let's go see, <laughs> do, it's like, let's go see, do a thing Friday. So that's how, this is the... <laughs> First episode in nine days. <laughs> uh, I also, we have some David Nicholson Reserve bourbon. Uh, it's made from... Be funny uh, if it was Jack. Lux Row uh, in Bardstown. Bottled for Lux Row Distillers. Uh, so, and Brian and I are huge fans of Bardstown. So we got that. And then Brian brought a bottle of... It's a Taylor Fladgate 10-year-old uh, port. And it's something, I've had this bottle for a couple years. I got it as a... Uh, a gift in our work exchange, our gift exchange, and it's not like I sit down and drink port very often. So not with that attitude. No, <laughs> but then you, I opened it with you. What a couple was it? Two weeks ago, maybe? No, it was Saturday. I think or was Oof, it? It just feels like two weeks. <laughs> time away from you feels like a long time, also. Too. Uh, but it's actually a lot better than I thought. I could actually uh, probably drink it a lot more. Yeah, to be honest. So we're gonna pass those down to you while you do that and uh, so we have I, I know our livers now are like i i don't even know what's going on anymore you're, you're just mixing way too much shit <laughs> but it is good and now steve you've had port wine before or have you oh uh, maybe um it's been <clears throat> lots of you know more dry wines around the house the merlots and cabs uh pinot noir i'm Finally, turning the page on. Um, I'm definitely more a fan of sweet wine than Kaylin is. Like she likes sangria, mm-hmm. but not like that crazy sweet red I had on the podcast here or Riesling. Uh, uh, like those Riesling. are yeah. That, that's you know, I grew up on white Tink. grape <laughs> juice, and uh, it's very much in the vein of that over sugared goodness. Now we'll say, don't drink this like wine, Steve. It's a, it's a, it's a sipper. It's good though, even though you could probably crush it because it's liquid <laughs> liquid maple syrup basically it's so good i know that it says it, pa- I, it i'm in danger <laughs> it says it pairs I'm in danger. it says it pairs well with uh with breakfast with breakfast or <laughs> chocolate or actually like uh like hearty like pork dishes sort of like glazed dishes I was like fuck yeah so yeah pork chocolate glazed breakfast did i tell you about the uh next to last tenor one i did on the grill no. The grill caught fire <laughs> again. That's hot. <laughs> it blackened the tenderloin, but Dude. what's inside still came out good. Is this peppercorn? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, it is. Uh, here we go. David Nicholson Reserve. Uh, haven't had this on pod before, so katink and katink. Ah, katink. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'm trying to be the king of cheap bourbon. Not cheap bourbon, but like v- value for money. The value bourbon. I'm trying, yeah, trying to do that. <laughs> but anything Bards, anything from Lux Row, like anything like that and, and, and Bardstown, going to be solid. Probably going to be sweet. I'm okay with that. Probably okay would have been that, sweeter yeah. had we not just drank a little bit of port wine, too. Well, true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are running the gambit. And 
uh, not to. I didn't know this was a competition. I, I never watched that TV show about chess with <laughs> the lady with the bad haircut. Mm, that's a wig. <laughs> thankfully <laughs> thanks to but her boy or i think it's her boyfriend or something like his eyes are like really close together and hers are really far apart and they were like what the fuck's going on here <laughs> <laughs> with their parents combined, they'll, eyes, have normal, they'll have a normal they'll have a normal looking child no one will be in the middle and then the other one will be off set way to the right <laughs> uh you know i still have a wii in case you need to make your own monsters the on that fucking picasso painting <laughs> of course the switch can let you do uh odd looking characters too yeah she she is cute though. but she, if you look at her if you google her pictures um on the anya joy anya taylor joy she looks different in every single picture yeah did you guys watch that Queen's not, Gambit? Not no. yet. Okay, so I, I did. When I first started, I wasn't really that impressed with her looks wise. Mm-hmm. But honestly, as the as the series progressed, she kind of grew on me a little bit. And yeah, the, it, it, it's got to be the haircut. If you, when you yeah, see yeah, that, that is immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Well, it's period piece, right? It's it is. Yeah. Fifth. Uh, what yeah, year? Probably. I don't know. Probably forties. Forties or fifties. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it's. Ow. Um, You're never going to see anybody it, with that haircut painted on the side of a B-52. That's true. And there's, um, if you guys are Harry Potter fans, there's a, a cameo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But ca- cameo from it. whom? Yeah, go uh, ahead. Go, keep going. From Dudley. Dudley, like the, the shithead fat stepbrother that was so mean to Harry. All right. I, it, it's I'm been a long, long time since I saw they, any of they them. They will know, but we, yeah. we, we won't. And if you look, I mean, if you look at... at how he looked in Harry Potter versus how he looks in <clears throat> Queen's Gambit. It's actually pretty impressive. But. Okay. And he played a really good character. He's, he's really good in it. Cool. Uh, I, I've been told I do need to watch. They say even if you don't like chess, it's actually a pretty entertaining Yeah, show. And who would have thought it that is. it was a uh. chess drama that, like, that mm-hmm. proved incredibly popular. Like, I couldn't have shorted that stock either. <laughs> <laughs> Things get popular for weird reasons. I mean... Did you listen to the Flaming Lips recently? <laughs> uh, Have you heard the song She Don't Use Jelly? Yeah. I never understood why it was a good song. It, it's not. Well, <laughs> fair. Was, but why is it still it was, on the radio? Right. Why, yeah. why, a radio? <laughs> that, that thing I have to keep turning down to cars at work. <laughs> it's like, oh, good. It's been consistently the country stations and the rap stations. Oh, Jesus. Well, not to be uh, not to be outdone to Steve's injury with stitches. I found myself with stitches, <laughs> four in my finger. Uh, and apparently yours hurt way more. Oh, my God. My, mine, mine was just irritating, but it didn't hurt a whole lot. Yours, however... It was just the needle going. Yeah, she. I, I watched. She's like, all right, this is pro- this is gonna hurt a lot. And then she sp- <laughs> she spread that, and then stuck the needle to numb it inside the cut. And it, yeah, I yelled obscenities that everybody in urgent care heard. So when I got out, everybody looked at me. I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> I'm the one that I'm the one that yelled and took the Lord's name in vain <laughs> in several different creative ways. Uh, Satan H. Baphomet. <laughs> And I have a show tomorrow, but fortunately, because of the location, I can still hit strings with that finger. I'm just going to be really careful. Cause nobody nobody plays guitar with the back of their hand that I can think of. And did you put strings on the back of your guitar? No. Okay. <laughs> Are you planning on inventing something? I have strings in my finger, though. Let's see if we can... Oh, God. Um, <laughs> no, it's not... Uh, it, there's no musical... Quality to this at all that I can hear. Uh, oh, it's right, let's, let's it's going to be an orchestra of screams. Is what that going to be? Orchestra of screams. That's a good band name. I like that. It's a fucking great, but it's got to be like a black metal, like a theatrical or like, you know quartet. Or save yourself and, a few syllables. It becomes the orgy of of screams. I fucking love orgy. <laughs> the the action and the band. Do you remember the band Orgy? <laughs> oh yeah. At the actually their their cover like Blue Monday. Blue Monday was good, but Stitches was so good. Yeah, it's so yes, ironic that that's the <laughs> that's the, the song. But uh, do you remember the the album name? Because I do. Candy ass. <laughs> uh, they were a here today, gone today sort of thing. Uh, I they have one album or two. Five. Then they have an orange and a blue one. If only we had the the technology. How do you type in orgy in Google and not get porn? <laughs> Safe search. Band. Safe search. <laughs> Band orgy. There, Band orgy. That's even going to be worse. Here we have Guns N' Roses fucking the Eagles. <laughs> uh, 
I fucking hate fucking the Eagles, man. <laughs> Dude. Um, they are... Wow, they're still active. It says years active, 94 to 05, and then 2010 to present. Uh, active doing what? Do it you, doesn't do say. Do you see anything about the band's reunion? I'm on it. Because if I recall correctly, it's as strange as I recall that apparently some congressman or senator wanted the band to play, but they'd broken up. So he called the band to perform at, I don't know, a birthday party or something, and then they've continued playing since. That's interesting. Like, I haven't found I haven't found that part of it, but evidently Dead by Sunrise with Chester Bennington had two members of Orgy in it, which is interesting to say the I least. Cause I, I don't remember, remember what time I never of day knew there was he a died. There at all. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Um, industrial, alternative, industrial metal, electronic, and new metal. I wouldn't describe them as new metal. It, it's definitely it industrial. It was definitely industrial. Mm-hmm. The, the heavy drum machine is the total giveaway there. We have not done an episode on industrial rock, actually. Ooh. <laughs> that would be a good one. Uh, seeing as that's <laughs> heavy in my rotation still, but... No, it's 20 years I've been listening to KMFDM because of the Columbine controversy. It's like, oh, yes, right. found my band. Or Rammstein, found my band. Mm-hmm. Nine Inch Nails, seen them thrice. <laughs> I've only seen them once, but have you seen Nine Inch Nails live? I have not. It's good. They came out with a copy of a, which I fucking love that song. Kalen didn't like it. It's like, it's so repetitive. It's like, that's kind of the point of the, of the song, song dear yeah it, it, <laughs> it's, it's like the song peaches you know it's just too much about fruit <laughs> it really is a song about fruit it, he liked a girl and he, they had a peach uh, tree he would sit he under really, the peach he really tree really enjoyed the princess and, and, and mario i always called her princess toadstool because i'm that old uh, but you guys are older than me though, so. schizoid nonsense going on with the naming scheme there yes schizoid huh isn't that a album from a band? I think it. Oh fuck, man, Schizoid. All right, uh, King Crimson. King 20, Crimson. Yeah, that's uh, it. 21st Century Schizoid Man. Yeah, yeah, that song's a... awesome, and Ty Siegel covered it, and it's awesome. Who's Ty Siegel? Um, this guy that's maybe a year younger than you, and has created something like 30 albums of garage rock, and it's all incredible. What the hell? Yeah, he was on Marin couple years ago and at the time he's like 27 like yeah he's my brother's age and has been incredibly prolific and you know, surviving his work ethic so probably means that whatever he's doing he's living okay and i feel i feel like such a shithead i don't even do anything like i don't do as much with music as i wish i did but it's hard to motivate it, it's been hard to motivate lately how was it so since you work from home and we don't, how is is your motivation lower or higher, or have you noticed a difference in like your, your the, the shit you like to do? Um, that's kind of tough, actually. Um, I I think overall my motivation to leave the house or do anything has gone down. Okay. Um. Not in a good way. I mean, that's why, you know, for me <laughs> to like... Him for being me to, here, we're to, winning. To, yeah, for me to join the podcast, that's why it's got to be usually a Friday or Saturday night. Because Completely understand. My Mondays through Fridays are are like, get up, work, mm-hmm. not work. And then you want to turn your brain off once you turn the computer off. Correct. Un- completely understand. Yeah. So, so Emily doesn't do the cooking. She can cook, and her cooking is fine. She just has no confidence in it. So normally, I have to do the cooking. But when I'm on my feet for nine hours a day... And I come home, I, you know what? I really kind of don't want to stand in front of the I don't want to stand in the kitchen stove. and cook. Right. Yeah, There's going to be a lot of lasagnas and pot pies, huh? Yeah, and you know what? It, Stokers makes a damn good lasagna, so. I sure do. I mean, it, oh well. Time for the news. Live from the podcast, here's A.J. Holt with the Beer News. Hello, this is Alan Rickman during the news. San Antonio's Weathered Souls Brewery is named the best craft brewery in the United States for 2020. Never heard of them. It, it, it's impossible to have the best brewery. I agree. And it's almost like the most obscure choice you can have. Than, yeah. Then the better, right? Because no one can tell you you're wrong. 
No, because unless you've just laid out every craft beer in a line and tried every one of correct. them. Because even sommeliers and, and Cicerones, is a Cicerone or a Cicerone or whatever? I think it's Cicerone. 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 Yeah. It, even they, like, everybody although has different Gar- tastes. Although it was Gary like, Cicerone in the extreme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or is it Cicerone? Uh, my, my Gary Cicerone. <laughs> Yeah, it's impossible. There's too, there's way too many. It's not like Screen Actors Guild or like Grammys or shit. Like there's, there's significantly less of those than there are craft beers. <laughs> right. There, there are thousands in the Piedmont of North Carolina. Right. So how can you possibly pick the best? I mean, beer? I could sit here and tell you guys that the the best brewery is Reeve in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can disagree with me, sure, but how do you know? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> was this some sort of Superman tribute? No, it's actually the name of that's a that's a real okay. place. But what's the name of it? Reeve. Reeve. Oh, Christopher Reeve. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I heard Reed at first, and I was like, wait, oh yeah, Reeve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's the difference between? Um, or no, what's the opposite of Christopher Reeve? Christopher Walken. Dang. <laughs> Bazinga! <laughs> All right, just for Brian only, since I knew he was coming, eh? I wore this shirt. Excellent. It's really good booze, too. Yeah. Excellent. And February 15th is Florida Craft Beer Day. The annual celebration is the brainchild of Donnie Gallagher and then Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn of Tampa, the city where Florida's first legally recognized craft brewery was opened in 1897. That's surprising. Holy crap, really? 1897? Yeah, the first one in, in Florida, which colored me surprised. I, I That's a long fucking time ago. That's a long time and ago. And they managed to find palpable water to do so at the time. Well, you can't use salt water? <laughs> oh, guess boil it out. At the ABC store here in front of my house, they had the Rogue whiskey. Finally. They, they have it. I didn't buy it. I'm like, I can't. I don't want to pay that uh, much for Is it overpriced? To, I don't know, but it's only two years old. Uh, it's a two-year-old whiskey, and that's I, pushing it. I, I would need to pick that up. If, you know, Probably two of them. One for us, one for Gray. Because he's been uh, hankering for that something fierce, and now he's once again the father. He is the father. Um, did you see the picture I put? <laughs> there was a, uh, a, a doctor holding a... Uh, uh, Fucking ultrasound. Egg, ultrasound up to a uh, the Ru- Russian doll, and then in the TV was a doctor holding up a th- one to the Russian doll, and in that TV was, it was like <laughs> happy baby. <laughs> uh, but their first kid was cute. Their second one probably will be too. Now it looks like an alien because all newborn babies look like aliens. They do. <laughs> oh, this look. It just, I hate when they show ultrasound pictures. Like, oh god, it has your face. No, it fucking doesn't. It looks. <laughs> Like it has a puff, face, it yes. Like it has a face. Puff marshmallow uh, man. <laughs> they typically wind up looking like uh, Wallace Shawn from <laughs> Clueless Princess or Bride. Princess Bride. <laughs> I'd say it's inconce- inconceivable. I'd say it's inconceivable, but apparently somebody was conceived. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, uh, there we go. 1897 in Tampa. Hmm. On a sad note. F for respects, guys. Pubs in the UK have had to discard 87 million pints of beer due to COVID-19. The good news is probably an ESB, so we're fine. <laughs> well, I, 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 I happen to like that. <laughs> I've, grown, I've started to come around to some of them. It's just an old tasting IPA to me. It's just <laughs> sweaty. Which, which have, can you pick one out that you haven't liked? Like, can you do you remember the name of one? No. Okay. Uh, old speckled hen, I initially hated, and then for shits and giggles, had it again in the saucer a few months ago. Mm-hmm. I apparently no longer hate this, but now I like now certain I'm... things like barley wines and old ales and old things with a little bit good. of excitement. But just mm-hmm. a regular low alcohol ESB, I just find mind numbingly boring. But Brian, <laughs> it's extra special. It is not though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Buffalo Trace Distillery has now released their Double Eagle Very Rare, a 20-year-old version of Eagle Rare. There are only 199 bottles, and it will set you back $2,000. I probably won't see it anyway. Uh, you probably won't. <laughs> but with that... Uh, we'll have Preston on the case. <laughs> you know what? If we all go, like, one eighthsies on it, we can just share that and just drink it when we all get together. It so. could be our own racehorse? Fuck yes. I mean, put it this way. If anyone sees it, 
Just you, um, you just do it, and I'll put in whatever. Like just do I'll, it. Yeah, but. If, you, if you do see it, it's it's like you're gonna get your return on investment because somebody's gonna fuck it. If you don't open it, like yeah. if you if you wanna if you wanna buy it just to have it and then sell it in ten years, somebody would fucking buy with 200, it. Two hundred, only two hundred bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's the uh, Ferrari F forty effect. Yeah, although they made quite a bit more of those than you actually think they thirteen hundred. Yeah, they actually made more than you would think. Uh, all right. I'm excited for this one, and I'm going to absolutely do what I can to find this next one. New York distillery Widow Jane is releasing their Decadence, a bourbon that is aged in maple syrup barrels. Yes. Natch. Oh, yeah. Now, they have a bottle of Widow Jane up here at the ABC store that they've had on allocation. There's three bottles. They're like 65 bucks. I don't know anything about it, but as soon as that one comes out, goddamn right I'm getting it. If it's under 100 bucks, <laughs> then I'll get it. If it's over 100 Depends on how far over 100 it is. I have a good friend and co-worker that works in New York, and he's a big bourbon guy, so I can have him. I'll put out the APB. You're a good man. I don't care what Steve says about you. <laughs> I'm super excited about this, too. This seems a lot more exciting to find. I don't know what I've been saying. <laughs> Whistle Pig and Ben and Jerry's have teamed up to make a rye-spiked ice cream called a Whiskey Biz. The brown butter bourbon base is jam-packed with chunks of blonde brownies, and then topped with white chocolate ganache and fudge pieces. It is its own tongue twister. It is the brown butter bourbon base with blonde brownies. Goodness. That sounds delightful. It does, yeah. But so, based on the conversation with my doctor today, I'm going to have to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, do what I did. Start eating lots of baby carrots. He does eat a lot of fucking carrots. Ugh. Not enough to turn... Orange. Uh, yeah. I haven't quite gotten uh, x-ray vision out of it either. <laughs> but uh, that, that was kind of by force a long time ago to have something to snack on that's not bad for me. And if I have enough, why, yes, they will have the uh, salad effect, AJ. Oh, yeah. Please tell the people. They taste like what? I'll be hungry again in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. This is so fucking good. This port is so good. Like, yeah. I... <laughs> So good that I bought myself a bottle of it today at Total Wine for the right price of twenty eight bucks. Especially for twenty eight bucks, I mean, something like this that you're not gonna, I don't know. You, I could open this bottle and and it could take six months to drink it. Mm -hmm. It could take a year to drink it, or it could take a week. I don't know. It but does, at twenty eight dollars, though, you don't have to feel bad. It does say if you when you open it, you ha if you keep it off refrigeration, which most people will, or a red, that it's about four weeks is the the limit to. Like for flavor wise, oh no, okay. But right. the thing is, if you put it in the fridge, it's not the kind of wine that's like special enough that you wouldn't. You could drink that cold or on ice and not feel like you're doing a disservice to the growers of the meal, right? So yeah, they have a twenty year though. Um, that's a ten, and then they have a twenty, and the twenty is only forty five bucks. Huh. And I almost picked up a bottle of that so we could compare and contrast. And now I regret doing that. Um, <laughs> I'll say we might have to. Uh, um, Plan that for an episode and do a a port wine do, tasting. Do a do a flight. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, um, Emily, get in on that. Oddly enough, one of my best cheap finds was a 2012 Bulgarian uh, mix. So I think it was part Shiraz, part Cab, part Merlot yeah. for eight bucks for a bottle. Jesus Christ! It was incredible, and they only had two bottles. <laughs> and bought it on clearance. Wow! Thanks, Wally World. It's What's the steal. capital of Bulgaria? Bulgaria? Uh, Bucharest or nope. Budapest? Nope. Sofia. Kia Sofia? Bucharest is the capital of Romania. No. Uh, and Budapest dude, is the capital the, of Hungary. This map behind me is no use. It's too small for me to read that. I'm kind of a capital city guru. It's so. uh, also <laughs> the wrong continent. No, there's parts. Of, it's in there. It's up there. Yeah, there, it's got enough of it. And the former Yugoslavia, which the capital was Belgrade. Just makes you realize how big Africa is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge, like, oh my God. Yeah, it's massive. It's like, oh, God. oh man, that's Italy. That little, yep. tiny, that little tiny shoe up there. Yeah, Italy's tiny. All those European countries are tiny. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we got derailed, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, Chad. You know what Chad is? A Chad is a? Fraternity boy? Yes. Oh. A lake. <laughs> a Chad is a lake. That's all oh, I got. I thought that thing that cost Al Gore the election. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, I remember that. <laughs> or uh, your people, your people fucked up in two thousand. 
Hey, man, Florida man, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's Florida the, man gets to vote too, okay? That's the truth, though. Florida, and, yeah. Florida man is not it's just pro- in Florida. Probably an ex-felon. Right. <laughs> but Florida is the only state that the further north you go, the further south you get. That's absolutely true, yeah. Because <laughs> Florida man it exists everywhere. Florida man's in North Carolina and yeah. South Carolina and Texas, everywhere. Even like even your most like hardcore democratic states like California, rural California is fucking redneck as shit. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's not yeah, a red they, and blue; they, it's a city and 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 rural. So it's, like where we are right now is predominantly blue. You go fifteen minutes down two eighteen, and it's just. Ding 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 ding. Well, you think about Florida, right? Every every city in Florida that you've probably heard of, mm-hmm. other than Orlando, is on that on the coast, yeah. on either west or east coast. You're either on the Gulf side, or you're on the mm-hmm. east coast side, or the Gulf Coast, side. or Atlanta, or it's not Atlanta, Orlando. Orlando is the only central Florida city most people know. So all of that space, all and up and down that entire state. <laughs> Is Florida man country? Uh huh. And it is. It is. <laughs> you keep the windows up when you drive. And, and for what it's yeah. worth, south of Orlando, you have the swamp people. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they all live in New Orleans? Uh, not if, li- not if they live in the Everglades. Uh, but they're not yeah. Cajun. No, you can understand what they say for the most part. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's funny because when you watch um, uh, the Water Boy, like when the the. <laughs> When when the the, spe- the the one of the coaches is talking, that's exactly what it fucks. Remember that time? It's like that scene from Not- Joe Dirt. That's my favorite scene. Is when that guy's like, "Homer and Megan," and he's like, "You like to see homos naked?" And he's like, that, and "Like that's cool, man." Like, like nah, oh. I think it's even the same actor. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Because then he has like some bit part in a Home Improvement back in the day too. Good lord, really? Yeah. Yes, yes, I think he did. Yeah. <laughs> It's thinking of a show that didn't age well. It really doesn't. Like it, I always liked Wilson. Yeah. You think he's the rest of him is a volleyball? Oh, wait, that's a different. <laughs> <laughs> no, the rest of him is the, is the rest of the fence. God. So, last but not least. He, he really enjoys the protest on the picket line. <laughs> hey, I'm against picketing, but I don't know how to show it. Thanks, Stephen Wright. <laughs> uh, so, Rick Beato got a copyright strike. His very first one. Oh, snap. From the cars. He did a what makes get, this song great on just what I needed. I was gonna say this is just what he didn't need, and he went on a r- tirade on YouTube about about it. And they actually, after he got that strike, Simon and Garfunkel struck "Sound of Silence" when he did that. So he had two copyrights. And you get three, you're kicked off of YouTube. Both of them got uh, the the copy the copyright strike got removed on both of them. Oh, good because of his videos. And actually, Simon or uh, Paul Simon and um, Art uh, and the the estate of the car since Rick Ocasek is is dead now they actually got it was like no we you know we didn't do this it was you know UMG and or, Brothers, the record and also YouTube itself has robots that are well, out to only when squish stuff which is surprising <sighs> considering like you can listen to anything the way you could on Spotify I was exp- Beato explained to it is YouTube's not doing YouTube's only doing what. <laughs> Their clients, so like, like, hey, we want a copyright strike on this video. Go check it out, and then they go check it out. Um, that's how it was explained to me. I could be wrong, but they actually got up with them and like, no, this is not, you know. And they actually had other people like Tool didn't even demonetize. Like most of them demonetized the video, but Tool uh, and Soundgarden Estate, Alice in Chains, they didn't de- even demonetize the video. So Beato actually got paid for it. They were like, yeah, we. We don't need He's this. talking about how your song is great. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. And you're going to, I mean, you're this a dick. Is, yeah. yeah. This is. Beato is fantastic. So yeah. the fact that anyone would even. That's, that's sad. Did I you, it's the record company. Yeah, last, it is. I hate did you that. you hear the last time that Christian James Hand was on the Spoken Tire? Mm-mm. And the best write in ever was somebody asking, like, yeah, so what's it like, like knowing that you and Beato are doing similar things? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa <laughs> stop it right there. <laughs> That man's a genius. Yeah. I'm a, I am a total buffoon simply showcasing the everything with this. Like, <laughs> like he can actually play this stuff. Like, right. I'm a drummer and total pothead. <laughs> <laughs> Beato explains it t- sometimes where I'm the, I'm the Who most, the hell's Lydia? I'm, sup- I'm the most qualified musician in this room, and some a lot of that shit still goes over my head, too, because I'm, I'm not a classically trained like musician. 
actually vocally I am now, but as far as when he does Lydian mo- and modal changes, like I know what a modal change is, but like Lydian melodies, I just kind of know what sounds good. So if you gave me something, I could see who the hell's Lydia. Some bitch I work with, whom I wish would perish from the earth, <laughs> and not and and not the hot uh, Winona Ryder character in Beetlejuice, because damn that was Ooh, that's right, yeah. that was my uh, that that was my introduction to goth chicks, <laughs> and it mm, it still brings back fond memories of wanking. Let's be honest. Daylight come, <laughs> and so does he. Yeah, I don't want to go home. Well, I am <laughs> home now. <laughs> I don't want to do it at home. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, it is it is what makes a song. You would think that an artist, I would love for him to do it. I was like, hey, let's, what makes AJ's song? I'd be like. <laughs> That'd be awesome, right? I mean, how, yeah. how? Yeah, how much money do you need? Like Don Henley has like a full-time staff. Of that guy's a dick. 40 people. That guy's just a dick. Looking for people to do and to take their videos down. Why? I have, have never heard of I have never heard of a single good thing about Don Henley personally. Yeah, it, no one's like he's a really nice guy. Yeah, musically genius, and then he's just a complete jackass asshole. In person. Complete yeah. asshole. Right. And it's unfortunate because like there's some really good Don. I, I love. Um, he gave the world dirty laundry, y'all. I love Heart of the Matter. I love uh, Boys of Summer. Those are great, but all she but wants you, to do is dance. I could take her leave. Um, I could leave for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, New York Minute too, isn't it? Yeah, and that was the Eagle Chopper. But you can lo- like you can appreciate the art and not the artist. So, I, I, but oh I no, have, yeah, I, I, I have a problem. Him, but, I have a yeah. problem separating them a lot of time because arguably, R. Kelly's one of the best R and B artists of all time. You can't really argue that. Yeah. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> holy cow, Bill Cosby, one of the great comedians of all time. But, <laughs> but, but, yeah. So it, it, it yeah. it's hard, man. It's it's fucking hard. My finger sucks. That's all I had for that. Uh, so yeah, I, I keep this thing armor plated for that very notion. By the way, it doesn't hurt. It just I'm every, when I look at it, I get sad because I should have fucking known. I have a cutting wheel that I could have used to do it. And no, I bet you I could just do it and score it with the box cutter over and over again instead of sticking it into my fucking hand. Uh, <laughs> Show must go on though. I can I can do that. It's just a little tight. So anyway, that's all I got uh, for news. And Did you pick up any back team for it? Uh, yeah, I haven't put any on. Uh, it's it's nice. It's I don't good, even cover it. I haven't covered. I only cover it up when I'm at work or I'm asleep. Because I'm in control. Like at work, I might hit it only here. Yeah. I'm like I just kind of let it breathe, which. They told me it was okay. She said, "Don't get it like super duper wet, though." Okay, interesting. Um, she gave me four days on mine. Like we ha- we had the same doctor. Is that a HIPAA violation? Don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to be HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> I am the hippopotamus, and you're a rhinoceros. <laughs> I don't want one for Christmas, though. <laughs> no. Uh, so we can. Yeah. Uh, by the way, worst Christmas song ever got dethroned. Ugh. Well, one. What what had been Paul McCartney's simply having a wonderful Christmas time got usurped by I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. It's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I'd rather hear my own firing squad. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking horrible. <laughs> we will listen to it off air. Listen to it on the, on air one time, and I wanted to seppuku myself. <laughs> My, we didn't get to this with the my, ladies. Oh, my uh, favorite uh, version of Hotel California was the one in the Big Lebowski. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all in Spanish. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we didn't get to do this with the ladies. Did you listen to the one with Karen and uh, Colleen yet? No. It, it's it's a long one, but it, it's it's fun. They were he- hello if you're listening, ladies. Y'all y'all are welcome back anytime. That was a lot of fun. Come God on was. down, up over. Yeah, th- they were the only one one of the guests that brought so much alcohol. We just couldn't fucking finish it. That's impressive yeah, yeah. for cr- for us. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But they actually the four crowlers for for ladies. It looked like tear gas canisters. <laughs> well, not not four ladies, but you would assume that uh, any lady you're in the presence of couldn't out drink you and they would give you a run for their your, your money it it's like that they're they're pros they're absolute pros that's very impressive and we love them so we're gonna do songs or the like your, your biggest songs from 1981 which is both of their birthdays yes so Hooray. happy birth year guys thank Thanks. you so you turn 40 is super cool first yeah in october and he's no october what 27th gotcha 
So And I'm a month behind him the twenty sixth, so I'll be Black Friday this year. He was Thanksgiving last year and Black Friday this uh, year. Uh for what it's worth, I'm only six Thanksgivings old, thank you very much. <laughs> Second leap year children. Cause during which there was an eleven year gap. Uh, I think from ninety eight to oh nine. Yeah. Where my birthday did not fall on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Um, Emily's brother was one day away from being Leap Day Baby because this is February 28th, 88, and he would have been a Leap Day Baby. Uh, I had a neighbor. So you're like it. shit for six years old, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's 30. I've seen some shit, man. I've seen some shit. I went to Nam. <laughs> How? <laughs> you didn't fight. Or, or now he went to Nashville. Well, this was in the 80s. It's much nicer then. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so we're going to do songs from 81, your birth years. Is, uh, I have Betty Davis Eyes from Kim Carnes. Never like that one. I do, that, but I like smoky voices. Uh, she almost makes Janis Joplin sound good. Do you know why she sounds like that? She smoked Marlboro Reds. No, she had a really major vocal surgery. She was a singer before, and she had a different, brighter voice. And she had a vocal surgery. Something, something got damaged. I don't think it was anything she did. It was like some kind of... But um, she actually had... Do you remember that song? She's got Betty Davis Eyes. I yeah I kind of do especially the, the smoky like dark voice. I mean, yeah. considering also if you look at said Betty Davis eyes, they're creepy. One man's creepy is another man's erotic. Oh, it's a Tory spelling. Before As we Tory go back sp- to yeah. Tory spelling before Tory spelling was Tory spelling. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> what were you saying? I say As we go back to the the Beetlejuice Lydia goth chick. Oh, man, <laughs> I just I was like. Uh, Hey, how come everybody likes uh, big asses? Like, I don't know. Look at Mrs. Incredible in the Incredible movies. He just gave her a dump truck ass and expected us not to, to respond to that. <laughs> Someone designed that on purpose. They fucking did, yeah. man. They just fucking did. <laughs> What's the uh, carryover from Disney staff between Jessica Rabbit and Mrs. Incredible? <laughs> I love Jessica Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit, my God. Mm-hmm. Hey, Brittany. Brittany dressed up as Jessica Rabbit and did a mighty fine job at dressing up as Jessica Rabbit. Also impressive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Endless Love from Diana Ross and Lionel, Lionel Richie. I remember that one too. Yeah, that was a good one. I mean, I, yeah, your typical bubble gummy. It was a nice duet, right? It was yeah. uh-huh. okay. Diana Ross is still alive, isn't she? Or did she did she die? Oh, no, man. is okay. Yeah. I just hovered over the name. It says she is an American singer. If she was dead, it would say was was. was. All right, so she's still alive. Hope I didn't jinx that. By the way, before we go back into jinxes. This is hilarious because Brian uh, came over one time, or about three or four weeks ago. We were just binging music, and uh, we were talking about like puking after drinking. I was like, I hadn't puked after drinking since my fucking bachelor party. Next fucking day, I was like, it's been zero days since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was pretty confident too. He was. Oh, he yeah. was. Uh... My problem was when we do this, we drink like fishes, but then we go yeah. and soak it all up with Mexican food. I go to bed and I get up. This time we ate before, and then we drank a bunch. It's not the move. Not the move. Yeah, to do. Uh, no, that's why I dropped by Wendy's before coming here, mm-hmm. and why I had five slices of pizza before the previous episode. <laughs> that got got to get ready to go see, do a thing, sur- survive myself. So Monday we're at Saucer, and we're talking about your stitches, and I I do remember saying this: oh, I've never had stitches before. I've never had that happen before me. Wednesday. <laughs> I it guess. happens. Can, for those watching, can you hear me blink? <laughs> so now, three's, third time's the charm. Nobody's ever paid my house off. <laughs> Are you listening, Karma? Are you listening, Karma? <laughs> Which I don't believe in. Are you listening? I believe in credit, Karma, because really, it's free credit. Free. I agree. Yeah. So yeah, nobody's ever paid my house off. <laughs> the fuck? Jeez. I never won the lottery. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. I don't play the lottery. I don't either. That's a tax on people who are bad at math. <laughs> It is a tax on the like, poor. You can't you can't win unless you play. I'm like, yeah, I know, but right. one person won, and how many people played? Right. Yeah. You have a better. You shot. were not going to win. I'm sorry. You have a better shot of riding a flying Bigfoot to the island where Tupac and and Biggie are living right now. Yeah. You have a better shot at that. Joe Rogan has a good thing about that. He said you're you're more likely to find Bigfoot than you are a black guy looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> The Bigfoot is or people who are trying to find Bigfoot are only unfuckable white guys. That's very, very true. That's very true. Yeah. I loved that. So I hate much. those stupid ass shows. I know. I don't think. Or how about Ghost Hunters? 
Same thing. They make their own noises, and they're like, uh-huh. oh, it's totally a squatch. I used to watch Ghost Hunters. It's called I, Squatch. I like it's a Squatch. I love paranormal stuff, but after a while, I was like, okay, this is kind of... They never found a whole lot of compelling. Now, Ghost Adventures is actually fucking horrible. That's just a bunch of fucking choochy jabronis from like, yeah. Jersey Shore doing it. Yeah. At least Ghost Hunters, those are actually like normal fucking guys, but Ghost Adventures was painful to watch. Next up, Kenny Rogers, Lady... I remember that. I don't know if I remember that one. I remember she's a lady. That's not it. She's a so that lady. That's Tom Jones. Tom Jones, and that was from the late sixties or seventy. That was on the Fear and Loathing soundtrack for a movie that took place in seventy one. That's not a real made year. in ninety eight. <laughs> oh, Lady was written by Lionel Richie. Okay, because this is popping up as uh, Commodore's nineteen eighty one because. Ah. Trying to look up, look this up on Google. It's giving me the screen names mm-hmm. of whoever posted on YouTube. Like, I don't care about your YouTube screen name, you dopes. Uh, did you see the Lionel Richie on Top Gear that one time when he was a star in a reasonably priced car? I'm sure I did. Once upon a perm, when he was in the Commodores, they uh, he went to buy everybody Mercedes because he they had <laughs> finally made so much money. He's like, and he, he showed up, and they were like. Uh, they were like, "You want to buy how many?" He's like, five. They were like, "We need to, we need to call the bank or something." He's like, and they call the bank. Like, all right, we have a, we have a guy here who says he's in the band, some band called the Commanders, and he wants to buy a bunch of, <laughs> right? And they were like, "No, that's Lionel Richie from the Commodores." Like, Mister Richie, which ones would you like to buy? <laughs> Please, sir, have a seat over here. <laughs> I would be like, "Go fuck yourself." Seriously, man. <laughs> There's, I've done that. I've I, obviously not to that level, but I've gone into car dealerships and been ignored and it's such mm-hmm. a frust oh you, man it makes me angry you had a hard time getting the super didn't you uh, getting a dealer to actually like yeah find you I, one. yeah yeah yeah. so i you know when i was first seeing if i could even get one i just kind of blanket emailed any toyota dealership within striking distance most of them told me either to look at the brochure or sent me the brochure <laughs> Thanks, guys. And, yeah, I'm like, uh, I can dig up the PDF right here yeah, now. Like, Thank you very much. Yeah, no fucking shit. That's why I'm reaching out to you. I, I know about the car. I want one. I'm telling you, <laughs> how do I get one? And they're like, oh, yeah, check out this brochure. One guy was like, Bro, you know, yeah, sure. you can stop by after work and, um, and test drive one. And I was like, you guys have one on site? Never heard anything back. Next day, I was like, so what about that test drive? He's like, oh, we don't have one. I was like, what? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Can had, we interest you in an 86, sir? For a Corolla. We have a Corolla. It's got a Toyota emblem on the steering wheel. Yeah, so I it, it definitely took a little work, but um, it was actually Scott Clark that ended up reaching out. And that massive-ass parking garage off uh, yeah, 74? Yeah, right off Independence, which such luckily was facility. easily the most convenient location for uh, me. I, I, I pass right by it. but Right. Um, yeah, meanwhile, I had to go to the far side of Atlanta in early pandemic days to find cyanide. <laughs> I, I went to Atlanta to get the S2000, though. So, sight unseen, going down with a check for... Never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's brave. Very brave. Sight unseen. I had a guy... I, I knew a guy that lived in Alvarado. Uh, bra- brave or stupid would have been, uh, you know, an M5 of similar vintage. Yeah, my buddy... <laughs> M3 of similar vintage. Yeah, my buddy from Alpharetta actually went down and drove... He, and he actually, like, sent me a fucking novel. It's like, okay, oh. it has this paint chip, this paint chip, this this right here, this right here. And then I got down there, and the car was so much better than I thought it was going to be. That I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Let's do it. Ooh, that's awesome. Then I drove all the way back with no tag, because the DMV down there wouldn't give me a temporary tag to drive back to Charlotte with. So Emily's following behind me. Which was, oddly enough, something... <laughs> super close to super block close, you. Super close, no tag. <laughs> which no was something cops. that was much more easily done, having bought the car from a wholesale dealership that had the capacity to do that. Mm-hmm. Have you mm-hmm. seen what a Georgia temp tag looks like nowadays? No. It's ridiculous. So typically, everything, you no know, carbon included, will have some sort of like advertisement tag. Just something for photography or whatever have you photography photography is that fake photography uh no that is uh taking pictures of your enemies uh so it was just (laughs) the just this uh, bmvw test drive tag that has the rectangle on it that they stick this printed label with the seal of georgia on it that is your temporary plate 
and mine after only a month's use, you know, already, already was peeling around the edges. No, they would they would not give me a temporary. T- I'm like, I just bought the car. Like, am I supposed to drive it back with no tag? They were like, well, we can't help you. I'm like. I have the pill, the bill of sale right here. Like, it, it, am I supposed to drive it back four hours plus with a no tag? And that was that was like we can't do anything for you. Like, I'm sorry, sir, I'm on break. <laughs> they get up and walk away. You're like, what? <laughs> well, maybe it's the temporary tag of Georgia, the uh, country that I needed. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, the asking that car is wide enough to accept the European tag, right? <laughs> Oh, Jesus which, Christ. Which always looks so much better than our dumb 6x12s. Fair. Uh, ooh, next up. Never, never mind. I've been collecting lots of them. Just like starting over from John Lennon. In 81, he was uh, dead. Well, so that was an ironic it title. might have been released afterwards. Oh, dude. Those guys like, hit the press, Although, considering like, the uh, the timing of that, it's uh, a little like strange. Start, starting over. Yeah. I mean... Those guys, like Prince, has like rumored to have like ten thousand hours of non-release. Like a material. vault of music. That, He's not yeah. a Prince. I love Prince, so I was more. I respect Bowie's Prince. I don't know if I time. really listen to him a whole lot. I mean, I know, I know, obviously the the Prince hits, but right. Well, Bowie was the white Prince, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or Prince was the white Bowie. Either way, they are uh, very, they're very sim. Like the 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 music, the the the, the the choices that they made fashionably and musically were, were very similar. Like, although Prince was five foot two, <laughs> but that dude could, I, I think it was, who was it that said like he could outdress your girl and then take her home with him. <laughs> <laughs> like not many, not many dudes could do that. I think one of the coolest things I've ever read about Prince was, um, somebody asked Eric Clapton about what it feels like to be the best guitar player or something like that. Mm-hmm. something to that subject. And, and he he answered the question by saying, I don't know, you need to ask Prince. I need to show you the video of when they inducted George Harrison into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know who George Harrison is, right? Yeah, Beatles. Beatles. So it's before uh, 1995. So it's, uh, yeah, it was actually 2006. And they had, uh, Prince was playing guitar, Tom Petty was singing. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. It was so good. They did While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and Prince played the solo, and it's so fucking good. Oh, man. All right, please, all right, please remind me to show you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just write Prince at the bottom. and uh, while, Prin- so while Prince Gently Weeps. Jesse's Girl from? Springfield? Rick Springfield, and everybody knows that song. However, I actually was surprised that was 81. I, I, thought I figured it was going to be late 80s. Oh, uh, I thought it was going to be late 80s. Yeah, I thought, it, or, no, or that's what I meant, like yeah, yeah, yeah. mid, mid, Sooner. Late. Yeah, yeah. That, that I can't name another song by Rick Springfield. Uh, oh, eighties jukebox, Steve. Wait, get back to you on that. <laughs> uh, That's the trouble of uh, you know just leaving the eighties music playing and then not paying attention to what the tablet says it is. Man, there's so many good ones in 1981 too. Like I'm just kind of oh. glancing at the lit, like eighty and eighty one. Where now we're starting to get into the meat of what, like when we were on episode ten. Could really do that. <laughs> I mean, 2010, but let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, there, there was some stuff, but uh, couldn't pay attention to this is when the, this stuff comes out. This is the first time in the history of this episode we haven't refilled a glass, refilled anything after the first 30 minutes. Are we actually like taking it easy today? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, it's, it's fine. St- it's still school night. It's the beer whiskey and, uh, wine effect. Well, that's what's going on right it's now. beer whiskey wine and an, <clears throat> an iced tea since uh, I got shit to do wait early tomorrow. That's hardly ever heard. Honesty <laughs> is such a lonely word. <laughs> Sorry. Stop dragging my heart around, Stevie <laughs> <laughs> and Tom. Steve. Brian. Celebrate good times. Nice. Ah. That was eighty one. See now, uh, the win- now that to oddly me, enough, I, I, the, I was gonna say late seventy. Yeah, was that, that was oddly enough the Wendy's chicken nugget ad back in the day, and that's what I had before coming here, y'all. Fuck yeah! Did you get the spicy ones or the regular? Regular. No. Hey, it, it's still I my understand. stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I was like, could I get half and half? What's well, a five piece, sir? I said what I said. <laughs> 
Yeah, the fact that Celebrate and Jesse's Girl is the same year. Oh, gee, there's surprises me. That, that, that like doesn't from. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a, here's a Wendy's hack for you. Get the spicy chicken sandwich. With I get it with only mayo, but instead of fries, get the chili, and then pour the chili on top of the chicken sandwich. Oh my god! Oh, it's so fucking good. Again, I have to go back to the conversation <laughs> I had with my doctor today. Uh, I, uh, Are you sure you want to go eat Mexican? Or la- oh yeah, I will. <laughs> Hey, they have vegetarian offerings too. If you're in that sort of thing, <laughs> holiday calories don't uh, too, count. Oh, it's too bad it's uh, <laughs> it's Friday, right? Too yeah, bad. exactly. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not Azteca, where they had a cactus burrito, oh, f- which was awesome with actual cactus in it. Oh, apparently so. Which nice. now tastes more like green beans. Yeah, cactus and that's is, one of my favorite vegetables. Cact and aloe, like you can eat aloe plants. Like, yeah, it it has no taste. Like the outside just tastes like chewing on something green. The inside just tastes like chewing on flavorless vaseline but you can you can eat it but i blew well, my there's guys that uh mines that <laughs> the aloe juice as me. well you stopped me at when i said i blew my guys <laughs> and was, i blew my guys minds when we got sugar cane in they were like what do you do with this i'm like you cut it and you peel off the edge and chew on it like get the fuck out of here with that <laughs> and like i cut it and chewed on it myself I was like it's really fucking good <laughs> and, super sweet and yeah. they tried like what the it's like, this is where sugar comes from. Your like, dentist is going to hate you now. <laughs> I have not have a have not had a cavity in ten years. Although I did have a root canal because that was underneath something. But whatever. I'd rather go through all those root canals and get stabbed in my cut with a needle again because that just sucked. Uh, right. Steve, it's not on my list, but it's on Kalen's list because your kiss, your kiss, <laughs> is, on, is on my <laughs> list from Hall of Notes. Uh, it's Daryl Hall and John Oates. They don't like being shortened. There was there was a comedian. It was like we were so poor we could only listen to Hall. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't afford Oates. <laughs> now that to me is eighty one. Like, that's Hall and Oates yeah, is that, that's quintessential. Yeah. Um, How good is Live at Daryl's House too? Oh, it's it's, it's fantastic. So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen to Patrick Stump from Fallout Boy sing "What Becomes of the Broken Hearted" with them. It's so fucking good, and yeah. I'm, I don't like Fallout Boy, but it's there's magic in that studio. Hey man, if you, if, I don't care what band you're in, if you can sing, you can sing. Exactly. Can you hear it <clears throat> calling in the air tonight? Allow it. The best breakdown of all breakdowns. Uh, I watched yeah. the produce like a pro of that. Warren Hewitt. That I hope was... you're doing marvelously well. He, he's great. I, I'm I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Better than me. Uh, let's just say today's work was entirely overtime. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, here I am, uh, after hour 48 and have to go in tomorrow. My ass is tired. Keep go- I got a surprise for you guys. Oh my. Sweet. In the meantime, our lips are sealed. <laughs> if you go and go again, you are the Go-Go's. Apparently one of the heaviest partying bands at the time. Really? Yeah. What is this? Dang, Flying Dog, I haven't had them in a long time. Cookies Flying and Cream looks down. down. <laughs> the Cream wow. Team, huh? look at this. <laughs> they didn't have oh, any man. any six packs man. left, so I was like, well, there's three of us. There's three of these left. Did they have to build a six pack and somehow spend less money? They were only $2 each, so. This right here, number one underrated brewery, mm-hmm. and their artwork has always been Slam. Uh, Absolutely. To, w- once again, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas because it's all Ralph Steadman. Oh, see, who did that, all that yeah. crazy bat shit artwork yeah. for Hunter's Thompson? Bat country shit? Yes. <laughs> uh, I've never had this before. Me neither. It's like liquid Oreos. That's fantastic. Oh. Oh, my goodness. That, that's a game over changer. <laughs> <laughs> Holy kittens. That's amazing. That's very, very good. Jesus. Tiptoe the fridge. Avoid the creaky floorboard. Slowly opening the fridge. Wait a minute. You're a goddamn adult and have, can have cookies and cream <laughs> anytime you want. Inspired to be, by the best desert combo ever created. Shit, dessert. <laughs> cookies and cream flavored stout was born from a love that last swig of milk after you dipped two, three, four, okay, five cookies in it. So drink up. 
calories don't count after midnight. Nine point nine and a half. Nine I was just about to say that. Percent goodness. Jeez. If I had to guess, I would have guessed five point five. That five or six. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for uh, nine and a half, just gives it bonus points to me. Oh my god! Yes, you said boner points wrong. <laughs> hey oh, hey oh. Oh, what we got down here? Six more weeks of winter. <laughs> <laughs> Considering uh, though that the Groundhog Holiday is on the second mm-hmm. of February, mm-hmm. it's always seven. Oh yeah, it's always seven in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a little Always Sunny last night. <laughs> I need to watch more of that. It, it's, yes. It's <laughs> well, I've never had a job that had this next song as the hours. Nine to five? <laughs> Nine to five. Wish. <laughs> and there's few... eight to whenever you get done, right? I'm, I'm like six to five. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, that's, hey, those are my hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you're hourly and he's salary. Yeah. He's making more. <laughs> I'm, so, really, uh, <laughs> I'm really happy that they're raising the minimum who? wage. Yeah. Once, I think if you do the math, the- oh, I was talking to my like Oakland, um, Oakland, California. Actually, in the I don't remember if San it's Oakland Francisco County. Junior is it, is it Oakland County? But whatever they actually, it's mandatory. They had to they have to pay all of their uh, supermarket employees an extra five dollars an hour hazard pay during COVID from now on, which they should. I'm, we are in contact. It should have always been that way. I mean, you're, we're a year in now. Yeah, yours yeah. was only short lived, wasn't it? We get another bonus in March that's $300. So that's, here you go. Thanks for risking your life. Here's $300. At Thanks. that point, this is a, a dollar a day. Uh, exactly. I mean, we're we're a year into this thing. Well, yeah, the thing the thing about it is, too, like there are people every day that are so careless. Yeah. And they take their mask off to lick their finger to open the bag. No mask at all. Coughing, sneezing. You can't say anything to them. And the thing is, if I say something to them, I don't want to. I'm not fighting for my job. Like, I don't get paid enough right. to get in a fist fight over my fucking job to do that. Right. And I don't want to end up on social media doing like. So what, I just what, keep my fucking mouth shut and I go in the back room and I wait till they're gone and I go right gone. back out. Yep. Yeah, I just do. I, no, what what you need is a faceless security force armed with those giant canes like you would see on like cartoon theater when they like just drag somebody off. <laughs> Da, da, you're da, you're, get, you're getting shepherd's hook. See ya. <laughs> Did you watch that video I sent you with Shane Mask Moss hole. doing DMT? No, not yet. God damn it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Because I'm DMT. I'm dying of my DMT. <laughs> and it's at night. <laughs> DMT. I have a power load. DMT. Uh, hey, look, a toad. The wet sprocket? <laughs> I let him watch the uh, TNT from uh, Chris Barnes and Six Feet Under, the old oh. guy from Cannibal Corp. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so great. Oh, <laughs> oh I love a rainy night. Remember? Yeah. Eddie Rabbit. Do you yep. remember that song? I, I, I remember night. the song. I, 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 I forgot the artist's name, Eddie Rabbit. Was he a one, one hit? Nobody's fucking handsome. He looks like the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> Oh, look at that. That's a handsome dude. Uh, he does look like me. Well manicured beard. <laughs> that is very, that's that's an excellent well manicured. I manicured before I went to go pick you up today, Brian. I, to... I stopped manicuring a long time ago. <laughs> I'm just COVID beard now. I'm just going to see what it does. Or just manicuring. Yeah. T- Toby's is almost that long now. Nice. And, but he's, I was like, when are you going to cut it? He goes, when COVID's over. Yeah, I got to say. So how about never? It's never good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever I have to. I, uh, years ago, I got my dad a book of New Yorker cartoons that was titled How About Never is Never Good for You. No, and so I apologize good. to the clerk at Books a Million beforehand. like, this is the title of the book, but it sounds a bit rude. But here we go. It is New York. Er, um, you know, I'm only wearing one watch, but if I wore more, I would have too much time on my hands, was it, I which is a Bat shit song. I ordered myself an original grain today. The whiskey barrel watch. I Ooh, Brian, uh-huh. new in box, like a new old stock one that has never been worn. I got it for half price. Nice. It's the older model. Steel. It's the older model. No, it's wood. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's stainless steel on the outside too. Damn it, Steve. Oh. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> He's like, hey, I got a good deal. On, or, hey, I found a DeLorean for cheap. I got a good stainless steel. Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Not now, computer. DeLorean. <laughs> Reconnect your drive. Oh, no. I, that, that pops up periodically. Uh, it keeps working. Steve built this computer for me with a meritage of parts, and it still works just fine. Yeah, it, it's it's about as old as punk, and uh, re- and currently requires less cancer care. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Speak speaking of uh, Monday, she begins the uh, injection treatment. That you know, she she's too old for surgery, but this will be Fullwood's first attempt at uh, using this treatment. Ooh, yeah, Fullwood's uh, good though. Yeah, uh, under the guise of the owner of practice and the lead doc yeah if you go to fullwood on 51 it's straight down 51 that that's by the roundabout right yeah you get right yeah. near it yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They, they give you your first visit there for free <clears throat> nice whatever you need like this like hey you came to us the first time that sold me and they, they they took such good care of coco when we had to take her in for her surgery and they did a really good job for her yeah, coco had her cone off in the carrier i'm probably and my wife is the same we're probably more picky about our vets and our own doctors uh-huh <laughs> Well, we can think for ourselves. The, Correct. The yeah. animals yeah. can. I, yeah. I like to go to Novant because that's from where Gordon retired, and that's for who Colin works for. Oh. For who? For who? Can I English much? No. It is speak becoming hardness. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, went VIP. No- I went to Novant today. It was, it was, it was fine. That's, that's where I got my well, – we got stitches. What was the one across the street? <laughs> no, I went to the one – so I used to go to the one down – 51 it was like austin village family medicine yeah in my primary like i get an email one day like that he's left i'm like oh cool thanks <laughs> so then i had to go today I- i've only got tertiary doctors well ex- yeah like i I don't really go to the doctor that much <laughs> so having to find you a new one Am- what you an american man are doing that go on <laughs> yeah did uh shocking i know <laughs> did, did the urgent care nurse give you shit about that too no uh, <laughs> I do a yearly physical. I I haven't been last year, but I, I'm uh, four decades overdue. <laughs> no, about two. I, I had to do them before going to Philmont, the uh, crazy backpacking church back in the day. Oh yeah. So probably haven't had one since sixteen, or maybe prior to college. Not I even blood work or anything. A uh, like just the basic tell my blood cholesterol pain? is. Nah. You should do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little time by me nowadays. I keep waking up about three a.m. in a cold sweat. It's like it's it's not a good look. That o- is over why over stressed. That is literally why I was. That's what prompted my visit. Is I go I fall asleep real hard at like ten o'clock, ten thirty. Wake up at three. <clears throat> the brain spins up like a hard drive, and I can't go back to sleep. And, and the rest of you wants none of it. Correct. Mm-hmm. But there's you, a battle. Usually, so. but it's mm-hmm. like it, put my feet on the floor. And like, kind of hunch over, and it's just kind of a oh fuck. Mm-hmm. Is this what I have to look Let's forward start. to when I'm 39 years old? Yes. Yeah, man, 40 sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 35 next I, Saturday. Actually, no, I will wake up and pre- something hurts pre- from sleeping. I'm it, like, why it, does my knee hurt? It's prequel sucks. Yeah, uh, I'm on my feet all the time. So like, under, beneath this, I have the braces on both. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it worse to have pain and sh- weird shit that happens to you and you don't know about it or inflict it on yourself when you should have known better? The prior. At least you have a At reason. least, yeah. <laughs> it's a stupid reason. Yeah, but... I'm okay with that. Hey, like, you know, what? <laughs> you fell victim to the same thing. You had access to better tools to achieve that which you hoped. But, no... You you did the thing, you shortcutted it, and then shortcut yourself. Mm-hmm. That's actually a life lesson. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like that. Me, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? It'd not be sleep like that and sometime. hurt my knee? Like, that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I, I can, it bothers Emily, I can lay down on <clears throat> this and go to sleep. <laughs> and will you sleep all night? All night. I'll oh, see that. I can't. That's my problem. I've not always been like that. No. As soon as I, I never started taking anxiety medication. I, I think it's a little late to take up planking, by the way. Well, yeah. so that's where that's where I'm at. So I'm I'm now have a referral to go to sleep study because mm-hmm. I I feel like I'm battling with sleep apnea. apnea. Yeah, yeah. And I I think I've been doing that for a very long time, and mm-hmm. I just ignored it. But in the interim, 
he did give me a, it's not a sleep medication because based on what I described to him, it's actually an anti-anxiety medicine that happens to help you sleep. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. So I take Zoloft. So it's got to be Zoloft, Wellbutrin. I can tell you. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Clocks is on a pram. I don't know any of the... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with... Viagra. <laughs> I can sleep, but only on my back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, only on your side. It keeps you from yeah. rolling over. Only my back or my side. <laughs> My chiropractor is like, just take that, and you won't sleep on your stomach anymore. Why? (laughs) Why are you poking me? (laughs) But now she sleeps a lot better. (laughs) (laughs) So while he's looking that up, we got Keep On Loving You from REO Speedwagon. I definitely remember that one. It's good. Remember that? And I'm going to keep on loving you. I didn't realize that was REO. 81, That that is the REO. Mm -hmm. That or Take It On a Run. I don't uh, remember. Sh- sh- oh, go ahead. Yo, VIP, let's kick it. Pressure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, under pressure was, but not uh-huh. that one. <laughs> yeah, that was 89. Yeah. We got the, I, I don't remember morning train, 9 to 5, Sheena Easton. Uh, I do. My baby takes the morning train. Oh, my Let's God. From, like from Euro Trip? <laughs> <laughs> y- yes, but also one of the really most movies. I think underrated movies. Here's a top tip: you, you made out with your sister. You made out with your <laughs> sister, man. Michelle Trachtenberg is so Good fucking hot, nice. right? And she fell off the map in a hurry. She is my age. Where did she go? Did she, she do anything? To a guy twenty years older than her. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like Euro Trip. Yeah, what, she found herself a what, little does club that mean that Does that mean that he's doing the proverbial gold digging here? Mm, maybe. I don't know. He might be like a sultan like somewhere. I don't know. I don't even know if she's... I don't see last, what seasonings have to do with any of this. Last time I looked, she was still married to that guy. So, Being with you from Smokey Robinson. Nice. I don't remember that one, I don't think. Don't know the rest of the words, but something about being with you, being with you. I know I'd probably know it if I heard it. Uh, how about this? She's a very kinky girl. Mm-hmm. The kind you mm-hmm. talk to mm-hmm. another. I can actually <laughs> sing this part of the shit. Ooh. A lot of Blondie. We got Rapture. Ooh. Yeah, and the tide is and high. And I think uh, Heart of Glass was 80. I remember seeing that I like last Heart. week's except that I love that song. Heart of Glass is probably my favorite, but I do I do like Rapture, and I do like move, uh, the tide is high. You remember tide is high, right? Brian, you remember that one? Tide is high, but I'm moving uh, on. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. Know. Yeah, that's Blondie. Yeah. Uh, I actually spe- wasn't a huge Blondie fan. Oh, speaking of the tide is high, Kay's folks bought the ha- bought the beach house. Oh, no old- shit. Yeah. When are we going? Uh, you know, I think uh, off season is going to be much easier. Uh, you know, right apparently now, now it needs. It, it's the the deal's not done till mid March. <laughs> okay. Sad. Well, uh, my brother, uh, they have that house on Ukrakoke, and. How difficult is that to get to? Like yes. you were, remember you saying it's the hottest minute <clears throat> to get to. You can drive for six hours and take a ferry for. All right, so no, you can drive for eight hours and take a one-hour ferry, or you can drive for six hours and take a three-hour ferry. <laughs> I think the less time I spend on a boat, the better. Mm, you too, huh? <clears throat> Well, in a Sorry. boat, in my car. <laughs> it took me forever. Yeah. Trazodone. I've never heard of that. Okay. Trazodone. They said it was mostly, it was. It started... Get in the zone! Trazodone! <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm trying to get in the, the rim zone. Like, That's uh, where I want to be. <laughs> Trazodone! Uh, surely there's some early REM on this list, isn't there? Yeah, it's basically... No. He said it was originally to treat like PTSD, hmm. and then they found out all the people taking it were sleeping... Uh, well, so then it kind of became a sleep medication. I'm like, that's kind of perfect. You you can't you can't uh, like have PTSD if you're fucking passed out, right? 
Radio like, Free Europe and, and was that's REM the problem. Is I, I wake up yeah. and, like I said, you know, the mind spins up and you get the anxiety. So if I can shut all that down, done. Well, when I shut my eyes at night, I just I, my brain goes into hyperdrive, but it puts me to like it. Just yeah. I guess it just kind of just goes. We're gonna think about all this shit at once until your body just goes. Nope, that's it. <laughs> I'm fine getting to sleep. That's the problem. Staying asleep. Yeah, and Emily's like that. Too. It's like my sleep cycle is four hours, which is just. Emily, really fucking sucks. Emily has a hard time getting to Ooh. sleep, but I've explained to her that standing at the foot of the bed and staring at your phone screen is not helping. For thirty minutes before you go to bed does not help, but she no. does it every night. That winds that shit back up, man. Yes. That that's yes. Yeah. Have you met her though, tiny little Asian chick? <laughs> I think I've seen her around here a couple lots, times. Lots, yeah. of mur- lots of murder shows. Very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, so <laughs> <laughs> dead horse won't beat itself uh how much oingo boingo have y'all heard not enough uh do you ever watch bachelor party with tom hanks no. the band playing in the movie is oingo boingo and the song is only lad which is batshit it's so cool <laughs> basically a song about this kid that grows up being a pyromaniac dude that's fire uh, the prodigy was that was it way later. I almost, oh, just spit my, so, uh, I almost just spit my beer everywhere. <laughs> I I just toss your Actually, cookies. That's what I was listening to in the car right before the socialist disco. Oh, nice. Super Casanova, <laughs> Super Casanova. Miami, Miami Weiss, hope to show on television. <laughs> Miami Weiss, that's his man who is doing watch podcasts with Matt Ferra. Yes. Just the two of us. We can make it. Wow, if we try I would have thought that was earlier as well. Mm-hmm. George and, uh, Grover Washington Jr. and Bill Withers, the Muppet. When I think about you, the bubble bubble, I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. Oh yeah, Depeche Mode. Yeah, and made re famous by a Gap ad a long time ago. Juice. Newton, Angel of the Morning. I don't remember that at all. I don't know that Newt- at all. All right. Or how about this for something that sounds super old? Elvira, oh, a yeah. heart's on fire. Oh, Cridge Boys. Elvira. And more REO Speedwagon. Oak Ridge Greensboro, just due south of Oak Ridge, North Cackalack. Yes. <laughs> and more REO Speedwagon, Steve. Uh, Take it on the run, uh, okay. baby. So that was the same That's a good year. one. Yep. They yeah. had so many good, uh, like... They had heard, it yeah, they, yeah. who, heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who you heard, heard it from another you were messing around. I was trying to get the wires crossed with the uh, the killer song. The uh, somebody s- told me. Yeah, somebody <laughs> told me. Somebody told me. Someone should do a mashup. Yeah. That'd be. <laughs> You had a boyfriend who looked, looked like, like a, a girlfriend. girlfriend. <laughs> really last year. That's great. Why does it work? Why does it work? <laughs> Have you heard that we're never getting back together, but it's tools uh, schism? It's one of my favorite videos of all time. <laughs> it, it's. Oh, I love it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Air supply. Uh, every woman in the world and the one that you love. I don't remember those. Uh, that, like I can only play some all out of love because that was in rotation during my Sam's Club tire shop days. Oh yeah, I, I, I keep I, I always forget that you did that. Uh huh. <laughs> I traded brake dust for paper dust, <laughs> and then eh, we're right next to the tire shop. Some more brake dust. All right, guys. Dun 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 dun. Move yourself. This is not. Hit me with your best shot. Oh, I was going a way different direction. Pat Benatar still looks amazing now. Will her hearts be free tonight? Time is on your side. She she just like for her age looks fantastic. How old is she? She got to be. Pushing 70s? Uh huh. I would think so. Sixty-eight. Yeah, but she still looks great nice. to be sixty-eight years old. Yeah, good for her. This is hard to do. <laughs> it is, yeah, with the mic stand. Uh, by the way, I've now acquired an old tablet from Dad as well. Oh wow, sixty-eight Whoa. years old. Uh huh. Damn. Yeah. All right. 
clearly doing something you love for a living is is the way to not age, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know about it, but guys. <laughs> Sam, a perfect example I, of what not to do. I, <laughs> I am, uh, I'm, I'm chasing a carrot something fierce. Uh, in, this yeah. pa- in the past week, we've set up some new equipment at work, and I've been the go-to to try to you know, squish fires and figure out what the hell are these things doing. It's kept me busy for sure. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> and and uh, the the people that trained me back in March – Chimed in saying like like your email with the concerns like that was really well well written I was like thank you <laughs> it's like because back then like I couldn't make heads or tails of these folks then it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh good it's taken this long for me to get some recognition <laughs> now give me a job slow and steady wins the race <laughs> it's a song from the I, boss that's very that could be misconstrued as very cannibalistic. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's probably. I never thought that was. I never thought that was Springsteen until actually I found out it was. I'm like, get the fuck uh, out of here. Totally that. makes sense. But Born in the USA is so much more gruff, and like the other stuff he did, what it just sounded completely different. I never thought that was him until that was a Wedding Singer soundtrack, right? I get back to you on that. I think it was. Wedding Singer soundtrack has some good yeah, it, songs. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, already alluded to Young Turks by Rod Stewart, which mm-hmm. I don't even know if that phrase is even uttered in the song. The police. Dee do 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 dee da da da. Is all I want to say to you. <laughs> yeah. What a yeah. stupid um, song. I mean, you know, everyone knows that song, and yep. and we can all sing it. And but you could what a to- stupid ass. And you song. could put yeah. that to any theme you want. <laughs> yeah. Do 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 da da da. da, da. da. Is all I want to say to you. <laughs> like, what does it even mean? I don't know. Come on. Oh, I know what it is. It's I'm blue. Do 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 do. It's another mashup. Write that down. Fuck you, Michael. Sixty five. It's the mashup that nobody asked for, but you're getting. <laughs> but here it is. <laughs> it's not the mashup we wanted. It's the, the, the one it's we, we deserve. <laughs> yes. Stop dragging my heart around, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> yep, we just talked about that one. Uh, Angel is a centerfold with a fantastic video from the J. Giles Band. Fuck yeah, that's a great. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great, great song and video. I like that one a lot. Mm-hmm. And you know, it it is urgent, 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 urgent. <laughs> Emergency. Urgency. Who says that? Foreigner. Foreigner. I completely forgot about this one, guys. We had Ain't Even Done With The Night from John Cougar at the time instead of John Cougar Mellicamp. Oh, he wouldn't even Mellicamp. He wouldn't marry Jed, huh? (laughs) (laughs) That's it. He got it. You remember that? Do y'all remember that one? Uh, Uh, Ain't even done with the night. I think... I yeah, I want to say I do. Uh huh. It's one of those songs you're like you haven't heard in a while. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's definitely been a long time. Yeah. Uh, in the punk realm, uh, the entirety of Minor Threat, also appearing on the Discord 1981, the year and seven inches, such as Don't Want to Hear It, Seeing Red, and Straight Edge. Uh, also, Government Issue, Religious Ripoff, Stay Alert, <laughs> Girl Problems, <laughs> Teen Idols, Deadhead. Uh, this is all old school punk, and it sounds exactly the way you think it would, and I love it. You're you're much more of a punk head than I am. Uh, yeah, I've never basically yeah. for I've force fed myself this, and I couldn't be happier. <clears throat> if I'm really angry, then it it absolutely works. Uh, you're you're gonna like the way you sound with this. I guarantee so, it. I, <laughs> I, I I've enjoyed. I knew you were gonna say. I enjo- I've enjoyed I Minor it. Threat so it. much more than Fugazi. Mm-hmm. So much more than the Evens. Like I love everything In Makai does, but his earliest work is his best, which is the running joke with the everything. Steve, her friends are so jealous. Just uh, like that. Old man in that book by Nabokov. Don't stand, don't, don't stand so old. close yeah. to me. Costanza, yep. Costanza, <laughs> Costanza works Was for it? me. <laughs> Wasn't there like an old? I I picture either 
an SNL skit or like Night at the Roxbury, but I picture Chris Kattan <laughs> playing this out where he was like, don't stand so, and he kept pushing. Maybe maybe Sting was like hosting it, SNL or something. It was very, I don't know where this memory came from, but Sting it's Sting on SNL has been fantastic. And also another performer <laughs> that I really enjoy is Garth Brooks. Oh yeah, he was so funny on there. Like, was the, it him like or Chris super, Gaines? Uh, <laughs> yes, I think this was during the Chris Gaines era. Jesus. That I think he did a song as himself and as Chris Gaines. Oh, and Lord. <laughs> nobody remembers Chris Gaines now. Brian, he's do you even remember? got his own town in North Florida. He does. <laughs> do you remember Sting's real name? Ooh. Uh, I knew yes. the first two, but I, I didn't remember the last two names because there's uh, four names. I, oh, I definitely oh, don't I, know that if there's four I, names. I, I know the double name of uh, Gordon Sumner. Gordon Matthew Thomas Sumner. I can see why he went to Sting. Well, you know, he says his. I, I, I forgot where he was, like on an his interview. Name was, his name is Greenwich Mean Time. He is a present tense <laughs> verb. He wasn't stung and he's not stinging. <laughs> He is Sting. He said his parents now call him Sting. His kids call him Sting. <laughs> Everybody calls him Sting. Really? Even his own children? Yep. Uh, That's awesome. Doug Benson had the best joke ever about that. Oh? Fuck Sting. Fuck the police has already been done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. Uh, DV Wonder, Master Blaster. Uh, That's a really tough video game. It really is. Uh, and then in... Uh, Tina Turner versus Mel Gibson was Blaster Master. Back to vice versa. I forget it. Back to Billy Madison. Stroke man, stroke man, <laughs> stroke, <laughs> stroke. <laughs> and trouble is, I keep getting that confused with sticks. Are you? Because because if you hear Blue Collar Man, like you're going to destroy your stereo. Mm -hmm. That song kicks so much ass. And uh, Renegade. Yes. It, the, the, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's <laughs> so good. And Lonely Is the Night. I hate that song. <laughs> it sounds like shitty Led Zeppelin, much like the band Dead Moon. Never heard of them. Don't. That that keeps popping up on my Spotify. They uh, what's the one that you don't like? Monster Magnet. They are my yeah, Monster Magnet I do on not your like behalf. You like you like Zeppelin though. Yeah. Do you like Greta Van Fleet? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Three, I, three, I've still never heard three of three brothers from like. Michigan that sound just like it. It's like yeah, I do appreciate the criticism. I'm like, dude, you sound like one of the legendary bands. Mm. Take like, this, run with thing. it. Yeah. yeah. I and, saw them and, live in Charlotte and, and, and do it were, again and again really? and again and oh again. Oh my god. I'm surprised you haven't gone down that path. Mm -mm. You have to. Do you remember... He's not a big classic <clears throat> rock head, oddly enough. Oh. Not, not a huge... Yeah. He, yeah. He's more 90s and aughts, and I'm more music older than myself. Do you remember the band... When we went to see uh, 10 Years and Chevelle, do you remember the band who opened for them? Killicoy? Fucking awesome! Fuck yeah, man! Dude, it... You're doing what to a giant goldfish? How dare you? So, it had... A, a gruffness to it that they never had, but like the music reminded me a lot of early Soundgarden. So it was really Ooh, heavy yeah, yeah. and really <laughs> trippy, very yeah. experimental, very in a, in a way. But it was it was really heavy and it really but melodic. It just it was really fucking good. Just to be opening for what you would consider that's monstrous. To yeah, you're like okay, we're gonna watch this band, mm -hmm. and then they actually went out there and it was like wow, these guys are. Like I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, dude, I would, I would <clears throat> no, love nothing more than to hear the songs I've written played live, because I feel like they would just really fucking go over really, really good. But yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point now where it's, I'm, it, it, it's too late for me though. I think you can write music for other people. If you don't feel like you want to get I up there and play it. That. I can't oh, no? do that. I You know, <laughs> Sia did that. Uh, do you see a chandelier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that fucking song. Oh, that song's fantastic. But um, yeah, she, she wrote she she was a ghostwriter for Rihanna and and uh, Ariana Grande and like a bunch of people. And then she decided, I love that fucking song. Yeah, James Arthur actually covered that song. Acoustic, really? and it's 
really fucking good. Actually. I have to listen to that to see how they how he converted it, it to a it's good man. acoustic male it, version. It, it's really really good. Nice. It's such a it's such a high register and crackly the way she does. The, the, do you like Sia? What? <laughs> Steve's like you lost me there. Uh, no, I'm busy looking up something uh, more in our uh, House of Wheels. Because we miss it by three days for the 40th anniversary of Iron Maiden's Killers. Oh, fuck, The man. second of the Diano recordings. Oh, jeez. That was released Groundhog Day 81. Like, never mind, Bruce Dickinson smoked him something fierce, but <sighs> Diano was no slouch. Did you know that he did a cover of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Only then, <laughs> and he called it Rudy. <laughs> That was probably the last, like one of the last times I was home for Christmas Eve. That that pops on the radio. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! That this exists in the world." Did the deer go on to play football for Notre Dame? Uh, no, he uh, he he went on to have some very bad makeup sweats. Hey, oh, hey, Rudy Giuliani! <laughs> oh, that was a good. Oh man, and uh, agnostic yeah, and agnostic front existed a bit later, but. Uh, their ode to New York Police State mm-hmm. says all you need to know. <laughs> that, we'll, we'll take that one offline. Are you a big Iron Maiden fan? I know of them, but not really. Uh, the Dickinson years, eighty two to eighty six, are the crash course you need. If like if you like that, keep going. If you don't, just stop. Stop. Go back yeah. to it's, Jesus. It's, go, go go back to Jesus Priest. It is not me- like all right. So what was considered metal at the time? It. It's surprisingly mellow nowadays. It's a to me. It's arena rock. Like, well, yeah, because I'm not a big fan of Judas Priest. Right. So it, you you might. Well, it's it's different. You're you're not living after midnight. No. You're not hellbent for you, leather. Do you not have another thing coming? <laughs> no, nah, that I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> what what else did Burger King use in their ads? <laughs> um, to, uh, but I think arena rock is a great. It's an Descriptor, arena rock. Yeah. yeah. Them and Judas Priest are arena rock. Even Metallica sort of it's an arena metal. Sure. Like Megadeth is kind That's of, your transitional band. It kind of is. Well, from that, your that arena was, to you know, your... from you know, guy getting kicked out of Metallica and doing his own thing and Yeah. Nope. You know, the the nineties catalog is fan fucking tastic. Well, and I think that's what it is. I I just stop in the nineties. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, with it's that. like they, these bands keep going, and uh, it's like, yeah, it's it's not bad. But I even listen if you to listen to the, the same stuff. band in the '90s and you go listen to their '80s stuff, you're like, eh. Uh, see, I just all, like yeah, their particularly the '80s Metallica, especially yeah, especially so, like, Metallica, everything yeah. like uh, Kill 'Em All through Black Album is their best work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I like the Black Album the best, and I know that makes that, me sound like hey, a that huge was my, commercial sellout. But that was my gateway drug into them. The that God was my. Is, I mean, the Black Album might be one of my gateway drugs of Wolf and Man into music and metal in general. Like that what, was a huge. So you like a Wolf of Man? I like the God that Failed or Sad but True. What's your favorite on the Black Album? Probably Sad but True. Really? Yeah. Uh, 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 it's so just. Uh, 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 you know it immediately. It's like I can name that tune in one guitar. Like, oh yeah, it's well, so. The, w- which is now a TV show. The blue one's in that tuning, so I could crank that motherfucker and play <laughs> "Sad but True" right now for you if you wanted me to. <laughs> I, I, I cranked the amp for Brian finally, and he appra- it. I mean, he cranked it like three, to, and it was to like, three, and it's so loud you can't so hear yourself loud. think. I don't always awesome. listen to Black Sabbath when I do. So the neighbors, <laughs> exactly. which yeah. also would have been. Said, I love I the lyrics correctly. to the God that failed because it's about James or James's mother who was really like it was the same like Maynard James Keenan sort of thing where his mother was just this really religious person and I see faith in your eyes never you hear the discouraging lies I hear faith in your cries Bo- broken is the promise betrayal the healing hand held back by the deepened nail follow the God that failed that's such a good fucking it is. <laughs> That's such a yeah. good one. He has. It sounds like he has a much more. Um, ooh, if you're going to talk about Maynard, we can compare those two. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was a pretty harsh lyric. Uh huh. Whereas Maynard was, he always. I don't know. Even though you know he didn't feel the same, he actually, I think, admired. 
do you remember he, fuck your god though? Well, <laughs> well, yeah, but, but I know he always had, he always admired his mother. Of course, I feel like he always had hate towards organized religion, whatever deity she was. Worshipping because of what happened to her. Yeah, yeah. I, his I his anger was directed at at that organized mm-hmm. religion, not necessarily her. Right. I love that. The pride you took, pride you feel, pride that you felt when you kneel. Not the word, not the love, not what you f- thought from above. It feeds, it grows, it clouds all you will know. Deceit, deceive, decide just what you will believe. Oh, it's such a good fucking that song. That's awesome, yeah. God, such a good song. The second Dio Black Sabbath album, Bob Rule was released 22 days before I was born. Ooh. And Die Young is far and away the best version of that. Is it the, better than We Die one. Young from Alice in Chains? <laughs> <laughs> God, such a good one. God, so many good... Mm. I could just go down this list all the fucking time. What were we talking about before? Oh, Iron Maiden. And, like, so... Your yeah, big, your and, big and four, an al- uh, alternate, yeah, uh, the alternate singers along the way that you know Dickinson, Bailey, like, Blaze uh, Bailey. Ha! Oh man, it was so strange listening to like the compilation, like getting into this. Like this guy sounds really different. It's like yeah. I sound like this person in a song. Like not not keen on him. Um, Sorry, Blaze. With, like they didn't even try to match. He you can't. Did. Well, I mean, but, but, no. but even ACDC, like they found someone that was similar. Yeah, Alice and Chains found thing. somebody that was similar. Yeah. You know but to go a whole so, different way. Do you know who found somebody to a T who was perfect? Is Journey. That little right. Indonesian or Filipino. Yeah. yeah. It's Filipino. Perfect. Right. It, it's so good. Then it's just Journey continues on. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I good. I think he quit the band or you know, some. Probably. Yeah. Per, more personnel change along see, the way. My favorite album, like, so the big four, your, your four horsemen were what? Anthrax, Megadeth, Metallica, and Slayer? Yeah. That um, that was for uh, thrash metal. Yeah, so my yeah. favorite and the, Slayer the, album is everybody's least favorite Slayer album. It was the Diabolus and Musica from 1997. You said Ren and Blood awful funny. I don't like thrash metal that much. But when they did that one, it was different. And so I liked that new metal style of Slayer. Personally, but I'm not a big thrash metal and I'm not a big arena rock guy, but I do love my favorite Iron Maiden song is Hallowed Be Thy Name. As a like as a singer, I love Iron Maiden. The music I could I could take it or leave it. Toby loves Iron Maiden. I don't really like that. But but as a singer, Bruce Dickinson is fucking amazing. He still sounds good. and He's 60. Yeah, he was years old. I think he'll be 62 this year. He 62, 63. I think he's born 58 or 59. So he, do you know how he warms up for a show? Like, they do three-hour shows, okay? Like, long shows. Oh, my God. And he warms up for shows by rollerblading <laughs> around the arena and singing the entire set list. I mean... He's, in a, he's a fucking machine, that's, dude. That's, and, am- that's and amazing. he's a pilot, and he yeah. beat cancer. What's next? Uh, this reminds me, I still have yet to watch Flight 666, the Iron Maiden documentary. Yep, they have their own jet. Flown by their singer. Yeah. He's Wait, the what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what, oh, that was the guy you just... Yeah, yeah. Br- Bruce Fuck. Dickinson. Not to be confused with the Christopher Walken character <laughs> from the Blue Oyster Cult, more cowbell video. <laughs> like, Whoa, it's the Blue- Bruce Dickinson. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah, but not. Chris Walken is Pete Chris Walken. <laughs> that's easily the best Will Ferrell thing, this side of Ricky Bobby. Steve called it. He's 62. So that guy must be sober and clean, because you can't just have like the guy after the show jumping on yeah. to be your pilot. So, uh, for what it's worth, the uh, I mean, the most difficult part of flying a plane is the landing bit. I've got a feeling <laughs> you could do about anything else. You could be sober by the time you hit the ground, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just yes. get in the, just yeah, get in the air and you'll be the, fine. In any facet. There, you'll be there sober you have it, folks. The, <laughs> the, uh, sober, sobering. Yeah, um, yeah, only the best words of advice here on the CBG pod. Thanks for stopping by, folks. <laughs> Look, I have. You're a tall boy bottle. What? I have a Boulevard barrel quad. Are they St. Louis or KC? Uh, 
Uh, it's the Sunshine Band. That would be kind of funny considering the Super Bowl lineup. We're gonna, we're gonna go Tampa we have Boy. T- we have Tampa Boy here and a Kansas City band, and I don't give a shit about football. Well, that looks like a Westbrook. What is that? It is a Westbrook. My God. Yep, I was wrong. So did you finish? Or you didn't finish your wine? Or I could pour it in the glass. We're good, man. I'll pour it in the glass. It's, I was going to pour it in the glass, oh. but you have port wine still left. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> Which one is that one? Are you not going to tell me? Nope. It's Westbrook from the East Coast. You know it's good. Yeah. You guys have been to Charleston? Do you guys like Charleston? Yeah. It's it's like a hippie. Or it's not hippie. Charleston <laughs> to me is like a old money version of Savannah. Correct. First I time I ever Savannah. had Pappy was in Charleston. Oh. we Emily and I went to Charleston the first time we ever, like as a couple, um, that was our first trip together. And that's when she backed up into a trailer hitch, into a Ford F-150 in her car she has now. She's like, should we leave a note? I'm like, honey, no. They don't even know you hit them. They they don't even know. It's going to be fine. Yeah. That's funny. That's where me and Paige went. That was... Really? Yeah. So we had, you know, we got married on a cruise ship with all of our family and everything, but we had to get married beforehand legally. Right. So we had a little jailhouse wedding like a couple months beforehand. And that weekend, me and her... Did it rock? It was the most jailhouse wedding I've ever... <laughs> but oh, Sorry. No. Here you go. It's clean. But we took that weekend and we went to Charleston. That was our own little... Mini moon. Our uh, little mini moon before the official moon. Cool. Charleston's... I didn't ruin your tablet or anything, yeah. did I? It's the case. Uh, okay. It'll buff out. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Yeah. <sighs> The the, ta- the tablets do for um, replacement anyway. Oh, it's delightful. The, this this thing's seen a very hard five years. <laughs> yeah, that's quite good. Was that hazelnut? What is that? The gates of Smordor. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you know, I'm also not uh, in the Tolkien. A s'mores-inspired imperial stout brewed with marshmallows, graham crackers, cocoa, and cinnamon. Sorry, cocoa face. <laughs> Wrong cocoa. Uh, I can absolutely with, taste with the an, marshmallow. With an egg. Yeah. And the graham cracker, actually. Steve, you don't do Lord of the Rings or anything either? No. That's the one with the wizard boy, right? That super surprises me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's Harry Potter. <laughs> I know. Um Wizards, I don't like dwarves, any dwarves, elves, like, fantasy. Like you don't like any I, of that kind I, of stuff. I play the shit out of the Final Fantasy games and early Nintendo systems. Yeah, but the movies never struck me between the Harry Potters and the Lord of the Elves. Just, huh. No, that honestly really surprises me. I'm a huge Back to the Future fiend. That that's kind of the end all be all of my sci fi. Uh, it, I huh? prefer Star Trek over Star Wars, but never got into the shows. I like the new movies. So I'm very specific in my nerdery. <laughs> specific I think that's, nerdery. I, th- I think that's why that surprises me. I just figured with all the random shit that you know and that you're into, <laughs> that that kind of stuff would kind of fall into your wheelhouse. And uh, You're like a sophisticated nerd. I like it. I've got you fooled, and thank you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> After all this time, I... You're an enigma. See, I love a mystery in, wrapped, wrapped in a riddle. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come yeah. from? Oh God! What was uh, that? It's always been there. <laughs> I think, Man. Wait, Man. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, which astronaut is shooting which <laughs> astronaut here, but it it's just always it, it always has been. <laughs> That's one of my favorite memes. Kalen's brother really wants her to watch the new Star Wars films, and I'm kind of apprehensive about it. Like I. I, I I saw them. I I just didn't care. I have no attachment to this. I have n- like no. It didn't hit me in the heart with the major event from what number seven. Yeah, I don't know what's going. No, I don't know. Mandalorian's really good. So I so, I've seen everything other than the Chewbacca the last... Christmas special from 1978 when <laughs> that was proof the cocaine was better. Yeah. I'd like to try that, actually. Cocaine? Would you try cocaine? Yeah. We can go down that, that rabbit hole. 
I would uh, try it. Would the, you? That yeah. bar in Plaza Midwood at least shouldn't dispense such things. I I think because I'm I'm naturally because I I'm on the anxiety medication that I'm already naturally sort of if I don't have anything to do and I'm sitting still, I will go to sleep that I will get way more done if I take an upper rather than a downer. Like you do cocaine, you write an entire song in one night? Maybe. <laughs> It's all like right. Fear, fear and loathing. It's all right. It might not make it's sense. all right. <laughs> but let's be honest. If you listen to any Stone Temple Pilots or Bush songs, do any of them make sense? Have you listened to, uh, there's an intro to one of the Tool songs, and I can't even remember at this point where it is, but it's a. it sounds like a teacher in front of a classroom or doing a seminar. And he's like, I think drugs have done some good in this world. And he's like, and if you don't think so, He's like, I want you to take all your records, all your CDs, all everything and burn them. He's like, because those artists that made that great music that enriched your lives. And and Tool slows it down. It's like, <laughs> and he's like, real high on drugs. Yeah, and it was yeah. just laughing. So, and I know Tool has talked about their, you know. Wait, their, it's Bill Hicks. Is, do, you, Bill, do you know that speech? Yes. Yeah, because that. It's hilarious. <laughs> Real high on drugs, real high on yeah. Drugs. <laughs> because he was real high on drugs mm-hmm. during a good part of his comedy career, so and then been, died yeah. of pancreatic cancer at thirty-two. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. It, yeah. I, I fell down his rabbit hole something fierce twelve years ago. Wow. And it's, it, it's really dark. It's really funny. It's really disturbing. Like. Especially when it gets to the shouty bits and his admiration of the singer Tiffany. What's that? What? Uh, what? Uh, this the the darker side of this dark poet. His words. It's, oh, so he's okay. Oh yeah, he, he had some demands. But yeah. did he ever have breakfast at Tiffany's house? I got my doubts. That song is still terrible. It's really fucking bad. But it's easy to play, and when somebody tips you a twenty. At a rural bar in South Carolina, you play Breakfast at Tiffany's. you damn right you do. Even well, you, you said wanna... what? Breakfast at Jimmy's? <laughs> Not anymore. Jimphony's. <laughs> Jimphony's. <laughs> What's your name? Jim. What's it short for? Jimphony. <laughs> okay. is, is that with a, is that with a G-Y-M-phony? <laughs> like the is Jeff. That, it's like the, uh, the, this sounds like the, uh, the cafetorium. <laughs> I think it's going to be. Don't church it up, son. It's dirt. <laughs> Cafetorium. The, the, the gymphony. It's going to be doubling as a gym and an orchestral hall. Yes. The gymphony is born. Uh, Only the best, worst ideas here on the CBG Pod. You ever, you ever try to run on a, on a, a treadmill playing a trumpet? Fuck. <laughs> Only a trombone that. How does brass rust? Uh, I, I'm, Womp. I'm I'm not an engineer. <laughs> I'm looking for a chemist, but thank you. Fair, <laughs> touche. Uh, but there's, but yeah, cocaine. You do it? Yeah. Oh, that's what well, I've always been afraid of. Uh, I've never, yeah, I've never done it, fellas. My name is Stevie Nicks. Hmm? I have a legacy to uphold. She doesn't have a septum anymore up inside her mouth. <laughs> I mean, an artist like that in the '80s, like mm-hmm. back then, cocaine was just that's like us drinking. So, so you actually beer. like after after researching a little bit, you actually have to like really do a lot of cocaine to overdose from it. Oh, so if like if you do like one line, if you're Emily's size and you do a line like that big, you're gonna die. But like if you're our size and you do like that, like just just enough. Oh no, I'm not worried about ODing. I'm worried about really liking it. Yeah, the, Fair. The, and, the then, addiction and then therefore, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it any more destructive than this has been? Yes. Well, it, maybe I don't. Or, know. Oregon actually just decriminalized all drugs. I mean, and it, they should. Portland's on fire. So yeah, as we'll, well, well you should when their finest city is under yeah. attack from white supremacists because it's a good the test entire, case. Because the entire rest of the state is a shithole. They, they they are the southernmost Pacific Northwestern state. Correct. Yeah. I've done Molly. I mean, only because Idaho doesn't See, have a coastline. I have not done Molly. Now, Molly was... 
I don't know how to describe it other than um, if there's any kids listening, probably don't not. do drugs. Molly's, but Molly's there. <laughs> right beside Mauritania. That's where I felt Niger. like I was at, put it that way. It was fantastic. You know what the capital of Niger is? Please. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I thought it was Lagos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what I played with when but I was a kid because we couldn't afford Legos. <laughs> you played with Lagos. Lagos. Uh, this this <laughs> map, fancy Legos. Uh, this map predates Biafra. Henceforth, mm. the, the namesake for the uh, Dead Kennedys frontman. Oh, uh, yeah. Hell, they had something in 81, too. I haven't looked that up for more screamy punks. Yes, Oregon just it has decriminalized all drugs. And it actually, it, it's been decriminalized in Portugal also. And all drug-related offenses and deaths have gone down significantly since then. Yeah. Because the war on drugs is stupid. They're going to find... That like ban's awesome, by the way. People do drugs regardless. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's... Right, we've, we've, we know this already. The way so I, yeah, decriminalize all of it. The way I look at it is if... So say 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 John Q. Public is working nine to five Monday through Friday, and he has a couple of his friends over his house in his basement. They put on some records and they put a couple lines out and they fucking do some lines and lay back and just listen to music for two hours. Are they hurting anybody? No. Nope. Here's the problem: if if you start stealing and robbing f- for drug money. Then you arrest them for stealing it. Because well, now you're a criminal. Right. You're a criminal for that. Correct. But Correct. And also one of my favorite Eminem songs. Every time I write a rhyme, people think it's a crime to tell them what's on my mind. Yeah, I guess I'm a criminal. I don't gotta say a word. I just flip in the bird and keep going. I don't take shit from no one. I'm a criminal. Like, <laughs> I remember that one. But yeah, they're not hurting. I'm no better. Like than you know me. I'm I'm a I'm a right leaning libertarian. I figure I I consider myself. Left-leaning socialist, you know, from social issues, I consider myself left-leaning from financial issues. Dude, and if we have him and Brian, the sa- other Brian in the same room, this place explodes. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. <laughs> be awesome. He's fiscally conservative and socially liberal. Socially, I don't give a f- I really don't give a shit what you do. Mm-hmm. As long as you are accountable for what you do on a daily basis, you get up and you go to work and you contribute. I, I have no problem with anything you do whatsoever. I like to put the kind and contribute. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. That is your title, bub. It really, so but, yeah, if you want to come home from work and do a bunch of lines or, I don't know, anything you want. Yeah, anything. You trip your ass off. I don't give yeah. a fuck. But as soon as you get would in you your consider car. Yourself, would you consider yourself a libertarian? <laughs> I don't know. I just... I made that one up a long time ago with the uh, the sea people household. Mr. Honestly, I feel like most people are probably most liberal people are not tell you, fringe. Tell most of them are not. Correct. Well, you're only given two choices. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's where it comes. But yeah, yeah. when the, like you said, like if if you want to do something in your own house, but you don't go rob or or you don't do a bunch of fucking crack and then go drive to McDonald's because you're hungry, right? Or you don't go shoot someone in the street to get that money. For that's crack, the UI. Right? That's sure. murder. Correct. But using co- coffee's a drug. Correct. Caffeine's a drug. Yes. What we're doing right now, all this it, right those here, are drugs. It's a drug. We're doing drugs on a podcast that's promoting one third of the podcast is drugs. Is <laughs> yeah. anybody else's arm itchy? My fingers itchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the itchy and scratchy show. Uh, well, uh, smack! It's going to be an itchy weekend. It really. It, it it's. All that money they're spending on arresting people for nonviolent offenses, and we're paying we're paying for those. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a it's lot. So much. No, I'm making sure my taxes go only to road repairs. <laughs> I'm very my disappointed. Roads. Very disappointed. Randy roads repairs because he <laughs> loves. <laughs> uh, that was eighty two. Oh yeah. So. Do y'all want to do some? Do you want to do something car related, or do you want to do? What we did pretty heavily music and now drugs and. <laughs> like I'd just say like there was something like Randy yep. Rose with eyes. Yeah, but like what cars from eighty one with Dead Kennedys, uh, uh, the DeLorean. Uh, duh. Uh, we I haven't done a three. We have not done a three car garage in a long time. So no, I have not. Much a long time ago. We used to do three car garage. We, you had to okay. pick three car. Like we did three car garage Italy. 
Free Car Garage US. We did Japan. We did UK. We did birth year. One does, year. does this garage have a toilet? Because I need to go to this facilitar. We did Japan already. Uh, no, I think I'm Russian instead. You're getting a bunch of ladas? Oh, you got to pee. <laughs> yes, we used to play a car or a game called Three Car Garage. So because we ripped off Team Clear Coat, Shh. they changed their names. Have you done Henley? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what we did. So if we, if we were if you and I were to play a three car, or if you were, I've already played the game. So okay, you've had more Japanese cars than anything, right? Yes. Three Car Garage Japan for you would be what? You can pick any three. You can pick three <clears throat> any ridiculous. Year, any year, anything. Any th- you don't have to pick, like, this is my daily, this is my this, this. Is, it's three cars. I've always wanted um, I've always wanted an, an old w, WRX or STI. You know, I don't, I don't know what, if they even had STIs over there. So the just, JDM? Yeah, just, uh, the, I don't know, what I would consider a benchmark Subaru. It's like the two door from like the first Gran Turismo, like yep. the coupe. Yeah, like a the little blue white. With the yellow. Yep. Ah, such a print. That, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah that would awesome. be good. Obviously, like a 95, 96 Turbo Supra. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, standard for me. And then I'd have to go with Skyline, too. I mean, that. And it's probably like the most Japanese Homer white guy pick ever for those three cars, but. That's what I know, and and those are the cars that got me into the the cars that I've owned and what I own now. So we we've discussed the same thing. Like when you play Gran Turismo, like when you grow up playing that, you you just naturally gravitate. Yeah, I think, actually, I think I went super boring with it, and I actually went like Honda Integra Type R and S two thousand and an NSX. Like Alex is an already edition. Like. I think I went it's like your Honda Acura, but uh, that's not. I mean, here's the thing though: is I could easily pick a Type R. I could easily pick an NSX. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, those cars, those were they started an entire movement over here. They did. So um, I rode. I've never driven one, but I rode. Um, so my my buddy Josh, his roommate at the time, daily a yellow Integra Type R. Oh, that's awesome! And I rode with it, and it, was it fast? Not really. No, not not by not in straight line standards. speed. They're no. just not like. But you know. man, you know what? The the sensation and the sound it made at eight thousand. It just sounded so good, and it yeah. was so light, f- so flickable, and so fun, yeah. and just. And not everything's about straight line speed either. So, and like, and I I know you absolutely understand that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And that's what makes a car like the Type R so great is because it was never going to be the one that. Won a race, right? No, not a straight line race. Not a straight line like, race. It was so much fun like, yeah. just to flick around. Like my first car that I got, well, not my very first car. The first car that I got that I mattered. chose, mm-hmm. that I mattered, was it was the, the RSX Type S, which was... The gold color, right? Or not the... It was the bomb, the blazing orange metallic. That's such a pretty color. Oh, it was fantastic. The same thing. I'm not going to beat everybody in a straight line or anything like that, but that car was just... I loved it from top to bottom. It was just awesome. This, like, so they made the Imola Orange NSX in the Canadian market and Japanese market, but we didn't get it in the U.S. That is fucking sweet. That's oh my god, that nice looking pumpkin. Imola okay. Orange. Well, Hon- and that's my favorite NSX, the one with the open lights, not the flips. I like the flips. Yeah, I like the flips. Well, I like the. F- All right, so if I got, They're- if I were to buy, if somebody was like, here's a hundred grand. NSX, I would go 97 to 01 because you get the updated engine with the pop-ups. That you, would, want, you want the pop-ups. Yeah. I, and it was a I battle do. between the NSX and the C5 for the last pop-up headlights, wasn't it? C5 was the last one. Because there was an 05 NSX, but the C5 was made... Wait. No, C5's last they, year was 04. Okay. No, the they, NSX, the last year of the pop-ups was... Two, 2001. Okay. So the C5 Corvette was the last car sold with pop-up headlights. And have you guys seen the new in, the new NSX? In yeah, person? I have. I have in person. I parked beside one in when I had my S2000 and in person it looks better. Yeah. For that money I wouldn't buy one. I'd buy a Viper Gen 5. Well, 
Yeah, I'm but sure. the ostentatious American part of me would rather. The thing is, like, if to me the successor to the original NSX is not the modern NSX, the successor to the old NSX is the Lotus Evora. Fair. Which has had its axe dropped, by the way. Oh, yeah, no. they did. They killed it's it, didn't they? It's getting yeah. replaced oh. by the Type 131, whatever the hell that means. I don't know what this that means, This is the actually. magic of listening to Spike's car radio for the articles. <laughs> I haven't listened to Spike in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's... The, the the next door battles are over and uh, the cars and coffees <laughs> under fire all the time. It's it, what can I gotta say. Seinfeld boy keeps it entertaining. Uh, the favorite thing that he's doing now is the dueling Jerry Seinfeld versus Jay Leno voices, and it's all coming out of him. Oh Lord! Oh yeah. Hey, what's it doing with this? Oh, Jerry, is this going to be a little car show going on? But the cops are going to be coming. Oh, Jerry, let's laugh a little bit. <laughs> now we're all morphing into Roger from Not Quite Family Guy. I can't get into American Dad. Kellen hates that show. Really? Yeah. Like, Family Guy, she could take her leave, but American Dad, like, correctly, you know, Stan, never mind everything Seth Farlane, but him being the bloated head creature and Rogers irritating the no point. Extremely. That's not the reason I can't get into it. If I'm going to watch, I feel like the American Dad jokes are just the jokes that didn't make it to the Family Guy read table. And then the Cleveland show, how the hell did he get three shows at once? Uh, don't get me started. Way, way to go, kiddo. Well, yeah, they couldn't give Quagmire a show because that 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 is the epitome of cancel culture. Yeah, and it, that said, I want a Quagmire show. Yes, <laughs> the uh, giggity the net giggity the net chicks giggity, when giggity, he had a, giggity, women delivered to his <laughs> How about when he when they, Peter hit his car and a bunch of Japanese women? Let's give it Oh my god! I was like, they're, they're tagged, all right. They're tagged, all right. Just, just get me to the airport. <laughs> uh, I have a soft spot for something, Brian. And this was very Macintosh because it sure weren't pretty C. I have a soft spot for this car, and every time I see one in the wild, I'm like, I really don't want to like it, but I fucking do. And you're, you guys are gonna clown me for it. ZR1 of Ugh, C4. Nice saw blades, man. Uh, somebody at work has one of those, and the front end is missing. It's just so, so rat like quasi rat rotted. It's kind of hilarious well, to see there's it, like, lowered missing parts. Good wheels. Uh, is that an El Camino? It's I missing everything after the V pillar. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you a pass because I like you. But <laughs> if you gave a four year old a crayon. And a piece of paper and said, draw a race car. That's the profile you come up with. Well, oh, the, I know. Well, what really cracks me There's up are the no early ones. No lines about that at all. Well, the, I love them. What, do what, you? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's super clean. Like, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you that. It's clean, simple. What really yeah. cracks me up on those, though, are the early ones. With the dash totally out of an S10 at the same time. Yeah, that one sucks. <laughs> but the other <laughs> yeah, dash the later is ones much is better. nice, but it's like... Oh no! Oh no! 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 Second, the last gen. You and what four button Delco radio cassette AM player? But it was made by the engine was made by Boat Engine Company because it's a dual overhead cam engine. It's not a push rod. You mean to tell me Mercury Marine isn't just a bunch of fancy Ford? No. So it's actually Mercury Marine made the engine for the ZR1. It's a dual overhead cam. I never knew that. It's not a push rod, so it's a dual overhead cam engine in the ZR1. If I got a C4, it would be a ZR1. It wouldn't be your standard one. It's 400 horsepower, which was a monster back there. Back then, it was it was quite a bit. That was one of the earliest six speed manuals to Uh market, wasn't it? It was. Which is funny because... All right, I'll give it points for that. Just Which is funny because yeah. now I'm on my second, you're on what, your third six-speed manual? The TSX would have had it, right? Yeah, TSX S2000 and the Wrangler, six-speed. 
the vib, the the cyanide, mm-hmm. and my imaginary tundra. Uh, the one in Atlanta appears was sold, but there's one in Richmond for ten grand. Interesting. The still still boring color, but you no, know, its mere existence gives me hope. <laughs> All right. So, by, by the way, I've been obsessed with finding the last of the stick shift tundras. The 05s and 06s had the 4 of V6 instead of 3 4 and 6 feet instead of 5. The ZR1 would reach you know, zero. Ha- does have to be hard to find now, though, right? Uh, I know. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> so a 93 ZR1. Nice beer barrel. <laughs> it's so good. I know. Why, so, is it, why does. Kirkland, I like. It, I love anything it, Kirkland brand. Like it, their beer's great, their wine's uh, great, their liquors. They, they had a few misses along the way of the the uh, the mix pack bottles yeah. like a year or two ago. Like there were some stinkers in those. But in Florida, they even have liquor stores, so you yeah, can get uh, tequila, in, vodka, bourbon. In South Carolina, they have them. Yeah, so go to Greenville Myrtle. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh hey, by the way. <laughs> It's a thing, and the four-year Irish didn't suck, but that got discontinued. The 93 oh. ZR1 the, would do 0 to 60 in four seconds. In what year? 93. That's, uh, that's, that's still fast now. That's Quarter quick. mile, 12.9. Yeah, I don't care what year you're in. That's quick. Half mile, 19.8, uh, 140. Top speed at 185. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, Little Red can allegedly do at least a buck 05. The Wranglers are speed limited to 106. It won't do over 106. I, I would assume you're drag limited by 107. <laughs> I would absolutely <laughs> assume so. But a guy was dynoing his his Wrangler, and they couldn't do it in fourth gear because it kept topping out, it and it kept cutting. The, yeah, yeah, so they had to do it in third gear after a supercharger kit they put on it. But, oh my. Mm-hmm. Can a, can a tuner take that off? Can a tuner take off the... I, unless it's literally uh, a power limiter versus a... I don't know. Huh. But yeah, I, know, I know I'm fucking crazy, but I've always... I know it's a shit interior, but that's the C, the updated C4 hey, man, interior. That's less we can't awful. pick our fetishes. That's one thing I've learned. So You know what? I like it. There's so many buttons, and it's so 90s that I grew up with it, and that I fucking love it. Like It is very 90s. It's yeah. very... If the button breaks, I can just replace the button. If the screen breaks on a brand new car, I can't start the fucking car. Oh. So you've heard there is all something of, about mechanical that yeah you you've yeah. heard all the laments about the new Ferrari Roma when your start button is a screen, uh huh, on a Ferrari. You know the start button on oh, the no. new no Mach-E? no 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 the Mach E has the. All the key, like it's all phone. on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, you don't get anything. You don't you even get, get a fob. Key. You get a key, no uh, fob. A, but you get a key, but it's not like a key you put in and twist. That's a pain in the ass, man. I don't want everything on my phone. The phone's slow. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a cool idea, great. Or if you're on the phone, hold on, I have to start my car. That's dumb. Switchblade. So I'm glad. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The, it was as funny as shit that my 2016 Cyan had switchblade key. And it's awesome, and I wish this thing was half the size. It's, it's big. so damned big. Like, I have a regular key. Even like the vibes, nope, key plus remote was still smaller than this. But at least it's the key, and upon getting the car, I got a replacement because paranoia. Uh-huh. That was a handsome ransom. Do you know where I found the spare key for the Cherokee when I had it? Hanging from a piece of coat hanger underneath the, the Jeep when I was changing the oil the first time. I found the spare key. It was hanging from underneath the car. I'm like, well, that's a good fucking place for it, isn't it? it had the Diamond Star logo on it and everything. I'm like, that's a great place for that. You've yeah. been driving around with it like mm-hmm. that? Holy shit. Well, it, it, had, for it. <laughs> it had the Millennial anti theft device installed. Just dick. So, uh, uh, coat hanger. Oh, no, oh you're talking about steak manual? No, that would be your millennial, millennial, millennial. anti... Millennial. <laughs> your millennial anti-parental device. <laughs> <laughs> My dad taught me to draw... What did you got? Right, so, I think I know what you did, but what did you learn on a manual trans? Uh, manual trans I learned on a there's, Miata. There's more of that story. Oh, there is? 
Um, what year? Uh, NA? Like the first gen Miata? Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was NA. I want to say it was mid to late 90s. I can't remember exactly. Those are good cars. I still like those I want to say like second gen or something. It, it's, well, did it have flip top headlights? Yes. It's then NA. it's an NA. Yeah. Those are so underrated. Like, if oh, you, it was so much fun. If you shit on Miatas, you're not a car. You're really not a car guy. Correct. Like it, it it's the quintessential go kart. Yeah, it's not supposed it, to be it fast. Is si- any, it's it is supposed to be size exciting of this and table fun. with the power of this erector set. Yes. yes, absolutely. And you can do whatever you want with it. It's fantastic. You can thrash it all day long, and you will never break anything. Yeah, like try to do that in your in your Hellcat. Like it's going to be fun for a little while. Eventually, you're going to fuck something up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, you learned. So I hesitate to say mastered it in a ninety Volvo seven forty four, but earlier attempts were in about a nineteen ninety Isuzu pickup at my buddy's place north of Greensboro at like thirteen. Were those, pup? Just, were those just the called Isuzu the pup? pickup or was it? Yeah, I think called something. this is post. This is post pup. The oh. pup was poop. We call them the poop. Uh, <laughs> it was after love, or that was somewhere like the Chevy Isuzu, like somewhere the Chevy Isuzu love triangle exists. The pup, like this, is simply Isuzu pickup. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, there is a '93 Isuzu pickup, black in South Carolina, for eight hundred bucks. Let's buy it. I mean, come on. But let's I got. I'm I in. Have, like, yeah. It's like, it's, let's let's yeah. gambler it. Let's chip in. You want to gamble? Like, you want the gambler five hundred is? No. Cheap car tell, challenge. Tell it now or continue your story. And then cheap we'll car it. challenge off road. Gambler five hundred. You <laughs> you you spend less than five hundred dollars on your car, and then you take it on an off road race against other people. Let's see if it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the I mean, Zuzu. That's a pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it, that's, yeah. Like, those think, things are pretty bulletproof. And I think that was probably one of the last carburetors <laughs> on market. <laughs> Uh, of which I know nothing about, except you got to uh, you know, feed, feed and bleed a bit. Mm-hmm. I know it's um, always a problem. The yeah. problem is always the car. But, uh, but oh, also, your, your once again, up. this would oh, be okay. a truck the size of this table. So uh, <laughs> mechanical simplicity is totally there. Mm-hmm. Uh, attempted that at my buddy's place in Rockingham, the county, not the city, North Carolina, when I was about 13. It did not go well, but I knew I must learn how to do this. Yeah. Well, flash forward a couple years later, uh, dad's car shopping and has on like a day's borrowing lease something from this dealership in Greensboro, a 95 legacy wagon. The last year you get a legacy of any sort in two wheel drive. So it's base model green tan interior, but takes them to a cemetery and all right, well, let's go see you do a thing. <laughs> Winds up not getting that car and said buys the 90 Volvo. And this is September of 97, two months before I get my license. Therefore I learn how I take my driving test in said Volvo it is a wonderful car, except when something breaks, it's 500 bucks. Yeah. Flash forward to February 2000, and my neighbor's 94 Saturn wipes the nose off. Oh, shit. Everybody's walking from their wreck, but the ball is totaled. The airbag has gone off because it only had a driver's airbag because 90 car. Mm-hmm. My wrist bothers me for years <clears throat> after that. Wow. Never get it checked out. It just kind of solved itself. <laughs> it's fine. It's a risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not like a hundred bones in there or anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the damn you flanges. Um, this is really good. I gotta say, Steve, you're you're so impressive with dates. And yeah, uh, I can't remember Kalen, shit. Kalen I don't, I don't finds if, the same if thing. Anyone like, else is like that? I I can't remember shit about I, shit. I, it's I'm uh, there is like I'm like. Pretty automotive, like, because that was something I was so obsessed with. Like, Dad had stacks of consumer reports and the little books they would have each year. And the books had the automotive summaries for each year, too, like models and, like, you know, estimated reliabilities or whatever have you. So I learned early on, BMWs, entertaining but terrible. (laughs) So hopefully yours by proxy 
is one and not the other. Hey, man, I'm hoping, you know, Toyota ensured yeah. everybody that they got a hold of the engine. It passed their inspection. They made changes. Uh, speaking of, there's... I did get the maintenance plan just yeah, in case. As you should. Yeah. Uh, but there's a red one at work that some fools got caught joyriding in. Yikes. Yeah. Well, much like Tavorish, um, I am the warranty. <laughs> <laughs> At the expense of my fingers sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's preventable or whatever have you. Um, I think next up I'm going to learn how to uh, change the oil mine, but I it will need to lift the car way higher. The busted knuckle garage. Season Repair or, and despair under one roof. <laughs> no, where can we find um, a racing type jack, but can it lift the car up like two feet instead of... No, eight inches. Mate, I gave him the jack because when I sold the S2000, like the, the jack was too short to get under the S2000, and now it's too tall to get under the Wrangler. <laughs> so I just gave him the jack, and I kept the jack stands. Uh, but in the S2000, I could change the oil without jacking it up. Pardon? What? It's newer to reach and go. There is a lot of room under the hood of those because it's a front mid-engine. And I had... So you just like crawl in there? No. Pop the or hood. nowhere. And to... I had an aftermarket uh, intake. The intake yeah. box on those were really big, but I have an aftermarket cold air intake that mounted in uh, the fender. So I'd pop the hood, and then there, they had the cross member right there in front of the engine. Yep. And I would just lean, reach, uh, 14 millimeter, and... Doo -doo -doo. Wow. And, and the, the, the oil pan, shallow, it, I'd put it under there, and I never had to jack that car up. That's fantastic. And now the... the the Cherokee obviously no, and the Wrangler I could just crawl yeah. up under there. You just and look at it, and you're good. And the oil um, filter on the Wrangler is on top. That's nice. That's so uh, baffling. I'm worried about what lives at the bottom of that engine. Um, you know, metal. is there a Chrysler has had a lot of <laughs> metal Star V6s <laughs> in cars with. That's a good engine. I'd be surprised if that one um, got recalled it, this far into is its it life cycle. Is the drain plug still beneath the everything? Still all below. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at least there's that going. I'm at least when you take the filter off, you're not, number one, dripping oil all over yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then all over the block and all and over everything. The thing, else. too, uh, with the, uh, with the filters. Been Dollar General, black t shirts are cheap. With the filters, <laughs> too. It's not, the filter's not. All right, the mounting's on top, but the, the filter itself is on that post that goes inside. So you, you twist it, and then you pull it out, and then the filter's on, like, you know, it's inside the engine, like in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's not like the okay. filter itself is on the top. Mm. It's hard to explain that without, Okay, like, that, that sounds a, less awful. It's like, a otherwise, like, conical filter fuck? that attaches to the stock one that has the... I don't have to use an oil filter wrench anymore. It's a... 18 millimeter socket and then you take that off and then it pulls the whole assembly out. He is okay. a socket. Yeah, yeah. Socket to me. Thanks, Nixon. I've only driven one Volvo and it was my sister's when I, when Emily and I got married, she didn't have a job and I didn't have a car. Yeah, so he was borrowing a, what, V70 wagon? 05 V70. Inline, turbo inline five. That thing would a five cylinder? Skirt. Yeah. Absolutely scoot. Volvo's, man. Audis and the early Chevy Colorados had five cylinders. That's the most random list I've ever heard in my life. Where does Chevy Colorado fit in there? Because was it just literally it, room, it, physical space? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it was. They're like, four's you know, too small in here, but we can't fit a six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> that might have. It was a replacement for the S10 that had the four and the six. Yeah, and early on it had the option of the five or the eight cylinder. For a while, you could get a V eight Colorado, which was easily your Too much. better bang for buck. <laughs> yeah. Which was the platform whore for the Hummer H three, mm -hmm. which also had a five cylinder. You could get with a six speed manual in the H three, which was a forty four hundred pound pig dog. Uh huh. But yeah. that was but the H three is not a bad what, looking. It, it was SUV. It, one of the Gag, con, like considered operations for this guy. It I was. think the Wrangler is the better option for sure. Wrangler is definitely the better but option. But that that was hilarious. 
And you know, it's not too late. Um, did you listen to the latest TST with Demuro? Yeah. They're talking about the Hummers. The H2s are the fetching H2s. What unbelievable the money. Hell? No way. Are they yep. really? Dude. 50000 Come on. Um, yep. One of the regulars at the Palm. They weren't even that cool when they came out. Uh, no. no. No, they're not. They weren't that <laughs> expensive when they came out. No, they weren't. <laughs> what the hell? But a bunch uh, of pros a, decide they're cool now? Demiro has a uh, two-door G-Wagon every, convertible. It's like an 87. Well, to me, G-Wagons well, are actually kind of cool. Not the two-door. It's, it's, an oh, 80, well, no. yeah. it's an 87, isn't it? Like mm. It's like a super old gray market one. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> I think it was a two-door. But he also has a Defender. Uh, old old uh, one excuse and me, a new old one. and new. And yeah, uh, adores the old Defender, but is aware this thing sucks, something fierce. <laughs> it has permanent CEL. Nope. So do the vibe. This is the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, no. Dude. If you want an LM002, that looks like get a Samurai. an LM002. That? It's a Mercedes G Wagon convertible two door. That reminds me. That the looks other like day, a really expensive it was Suzuki expen- Samurai. It, yeah. Uh, that reminds me the other day when I saw an Xterra parked on the side of 77, like by the office park, like about at Woodlawn. Mm hmm. Um, it's parked on the side, so it's at a steep angle. It's like, no, I need to park my car and go kick the Xterra. Over the cliff. Uh huh. Like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, how is this not tipping over? It was a very strange day. I like the G Wagon. I had to get pain, and I discovered the new Kirkland beer. That's now Brian's new favorite cheap thing. So fantastic. now we have to stop drinking Narragansett. My- Bullshit, because that's easier to come by. Mine's High Life. My cheap go to was High Life. I mean, did you ever get arrested drinking any of these things, though? I know you did. Yep. The weird <laughs> things to do, drinking Rolling Rock and Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and then the fact that is the go-to beer choice for the angry video game nerd on the YouTube. That's... Made it all the funnier. That is funny. When, which is also funny that when he's not that character, he seems a mad decent fellow. Yeah. And and a father of two daughters. Doug DeMuro has, used to work for... Jalopnik. He was a blogger and, for them, making pennies a day. And now he has one of the biggest automotive channels on YouTube. And his own not-quite-bring-a-trailer type car bidding site. So wow. the intermediate of eBay mm-hmm. Motors and bring-a-trailer, he fills the gap. So anybody in like the 20K realm of cool shit, here, stop, stay a while. I subscribe today to the newsletter to see... <laughs> What random things I should not be buying. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's own. He, he, Which is he likes disappointing different. to see. You know, the eighty nine GTI I had back in the day is oh. now a ten thousand dollar car. Damn! At the time, I bought it for three, sold it for two, and the guy that bought it crashed it three weeks later uh. and was in it like totaled critical condition. Get a call from an insurance company asking about the car. <laughs> like. Uh, I don't have this anymore. Here's bill of sale. Like the tag is on the next car, the 98 that was a very fast turd, <laughs> but it was a VR six third gen GTI. Mm. But the, the car, the quintessential love to hate it. Like when it ran, it's fantastic. This thing had things go wrong with it. I didn't know. <laughs> have you ever derailed the seat of your car? <laughs> no. No, Has I not. your hydraulic clutch gone out? No. So it's not until the engine's warm, you can shift out of second. Luckily, that car had enough power to go 70 in second. Holy crap. The, Gen, Gen 1 Viper like you went from eight. You went from three down to two, thinking you were going into four? Uh, I was well aware of what I'm doing. To, uh, no, just You have to start the car in the gear, and like once the temp's warm, all right, it's just fine. But the prior twos were quite irritating. Wow. Luckily, I had not a clue, just blind luck. Like, all right, well, this thing has enough juice. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> that it, it was, a, you know, th- this would have been a good, um, 
no, let's face it, a terrible starter car for somebody learning how to drive stick. Yeah. Uh, Not as bad as plug, mine. Let's plug, plug it in second, and uh, it, it's just going to go. If you need to stop, just push the clutch in. Don't move the stick. Don't do anything. No, it's just you have – this is your on-off switch and your gas. <laughs> you just go. You, you don't need to shift. Like that's and current car allegedly can't hit sixty in second. <laughs> but like I said, it allegedly hits a bike oh five on forty five. Wow, no, nobody had a weirder first manual transmission than I did from the sixty eight Dodge D one hundred. Was that a column shift? Yeah, three on the tree. Which, which, is which I've something never driven. Me it's, either. Yeah, actually, not bad. Because your your hands are already up here, so it's all right. So if I'm here, it actually makes more physical sense, right? It's just if you look such at such a right, weird motion to me. Well, if you look at it like a all right, so I if like you're looking a at better it visual console, of... look at it console wise. Uh huh. Reverse is top left. First is dog leg straight down, and then second is up and to the right, and then third is straight down. But it's like that. Just up here. So when you you start out in first, you rev, and then you just take it, and then when you're shifting, you just take your hand like this, and then this way. So it's... And then straight down, and then you're in third. But that was geared so lowly that you could start out in third gear, and you didn't even have to shift. <laughs> it wouldn't stall or anything. It would just, no, you it would just, just go. go. It, uh, it, just go it would go 60 miles per hour downhill with a really strong wind. Yeah. So I'd be on the interstate coming back to college, going to college. That sounds about like when people flicking you off. uh, Probably. Dick. Well, have they ever seen Christmas Vacation or Overboard? Because that's about the same truck. It's a menacing vehicle. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing port wine and bourbon. Oh, my stig. We're going to see what this tastes like. It's good nuts. Yeah, it, it's you know what I said at my uh, second rodeo. What? This ain't my first rodeo, <laughs> Dick. I don't know why I fall for your jokes. Even after all this time, I still fight for your jokes. <laughs> all right, let's see. That smells really good. Just, just smell it. I mean, anything with port in it can't smell bad because it's so mapley. <laughs> it smells so good. I think this is how you stop waiting on. Whoever's maple bourbon barrel, blah blah. You buy the exit <laughs> one, add it to support. You're good. I taste it. I taste Pull, it. Yeah, go add ahead. It, add it to support. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can't English now. Eh, whatever we're doing is working. <laughs> that's that bourbon you talked about. It's gonna be aged in maple barrels. Yeah, I yeah. that's it. Oh, it's, you want to try it? Sure. <laughs> it's like bourbon pancake. Give it at COVID. Mm. D- Doug has owned several Volvo 850 Turbo, Ooh-wee. Mercedes E55 AMG, spicy pancake. Oh dear, uh, 97 Defender 90 that he drove over an Audi Allroad, <laughs> <laughs> Cadillac CTSV wagon with a manual transmission, uh, 06 Lotus Elise. Ah uh, yes, the journalist special. 07 the- Aston Martin V8 Vantage manual transmission. <laughs> 95 Range Rover. That was the CarMax unlimited mileage warranty. That was how I came into his sphere of influence. Uh Uh-huh. G500 G-Wagon. 04 Ferrari F360. 95 Hummer. 97 Viper GTS. This this one single guy owned all these? Yeah. He owned each one for one year and would sell it. Well, to do the... 89 Nissan S Cargo. What is what is that? Um a van that looks like a snail. <laughs> From Japan. That's awesome. Yeah. So he, he should have just kept that one. He why has not? the this cars is why for a year. They're better than us. Yeah. Mercedes G500 Cabriolet 2005 Ford GT. Wow. And I think the current running is the GT the new Defender element. Mm-hmm. 
The uh, what did you replace the stinger with? The defender, the new defender. Okay. Which, because it was baffling when you replace the what E sixty three wagon with the stinger, and everyone's like, "Who are you throwing?" He picked up a new old stock stinger for forty. No, that was a cheaper. S- thirty two. Way cheaper. Brand okay. new Stinger for thirty two thousand. But, but it was sitting not on the a bad looking car. It was sitting on the lot for two the years. The Kia Stinger, yes, yeah, like the new one, thirty two thousand. Yeah. So, all right, brand so, new. So you got it half price. Yeah. How fast are those things? Pretty fucking they quick. Don't suck. Don't um, suck. Okay. Let's see, Kia uh, Stinger. But by, by the way, AJ. Yeah. That, that's another Bobism. Oh. It doesn't suck. Oh. That's where you got that from. I wish they made it in two door because it always looked really sporty yeah. to me. Yeah. And then you see it from the side, and I'm like, wow, that's actually a lot bigger and longer than it. It Jesus. Than you would expect. 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, but how heavy? With a four-door, I feel like it's a pretty big Pushing car. Pushing four. This is probably. Probably not as heavy as the regular. Um, Let's hope not. I, I would think not. The Wrangler's 4,200 <laughs> pounds. The Kia Stinger Hybrid. The- it's faster and heavier. Goodbye tires. The new the the Wrangler 392, the Hemi, the new the new V8 Wrangler. The about combined, the about damn time. 14 miles per gallon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing about the Supra that I think I mean, I get 25 miles a gallon. Mhm. People just assume you get shitty gas mileage, but uh, vets are the same. You, you you will get 33 miles per gallon out of a vet on the highway. Yeah, when my dad used to have his, yeah, when my dad had his, he'd have that six gear, you know, highway cruising gear, and he'd get up here, I think he was 30 plus. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember what year he had. It was 2000 something. Somebody hypermiled a C7 with a seven speed, and then got 40. (laughs) Damn. Yeah, if if you really Uh, drive it. I did that yesterday, but in something that, (laughs) no. Can <laughs> so, something less surprising than a C7? And yeah, I got forty miles to the gallon of cyan. I got I got thirty nine out of the TSX on the way to Raleigh, but that's I was true, that's good. I was yeah. trying, like I was yeah, yeah. like, you know, was that a forty nine sixty four? Mm-hmm. No, no interstate. The Wrangler gets better gas mileage in the city because on the interstate I'm going eighty and it's shaped like this house. <laughs> so <laughs> in what fifth gear? Uh, sixth. Oh, you do have a six gear. Yeah, it's six. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have a, you yeah, have a it, it's a cruising gear, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Um between last car and this car, they're still cranking out three thousand RPM at seventy. The highest one I've had was the S two thousand. At seventy was four thousand RPMs. <laughs> But, but for an S two thousand, when your red line's like eighty five hundred, uh-huh. yeah, it was, like it four thousand is like nothing. It wasn't. Yeah, it was like they it's a go kart. You yeah. don't need cruising gear. No, it never felt strange. It it, it it never felt like like the Dodge D one hundred pickup would be. It didn't have a tack. <laughs> That'd but. be real funny. You know, um, you you hear the wheezing. You know, yeah, it just it never just... felt. It never felt like it was struggling for, you know, it, or, or it, not it struggling, just, but it it just simply works. Either you can pull this house out of its foundation or not. Mm-hmm. Whew. Two and a half hours. Is it time to eat? I'm sure I could. How about y'all? I mean, yeah. Cool. Uh, always a lot of fun. Brian, thank you for coming again. Thanks for having me again. It's, it's always an open invitation, even though you've been here more times than the paint has been on the walls at this point. <laughs> and we will absolutely have it. You're an honorary third uh, host at this point. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, 81's in the books. Anybody got any parting shots for the viewers and listeners? Uh, thoughts and good vibes for Kittle Bits going into whatever the hell this thing is. Yes. Uh, uh, positive, positive vibes for the former Vibe owner and the kitty, Mrs. Punk, who definitely is... Nice when you're there and not when you're not. Uh, you know, that punk's acceptance of me 
definitely helped <laughs> along the way. Um, almost five years ago when we started dating. So mm-hmm. that's, that's been nice. So it, it's major. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And getting off a climp discuss amongst yourselves. Yeah. Animals are family. So the animals are family. Absolutely. That's a good way to end. Yeah. Good luck. Well, Brian, thanks again. Thank you. And I'm AJ. I'm Steve. If a climped. Bye bye. Tittles, McGriddles. Thank <laughs> you.